For the next 1,000 days, I'll be traveling through different anime universes. I'll be going up against the likes of Titans, Demons, and much more. Will I be able to slay all my enemies and grow even more powerful? Or will I be crushed to bits? Watch until the end to find out. On day one, I spawned into an open field full of strange humanoid monsters. Where am I? Why are my hearts pounding? What are those things? There were giant humanoid monsters everywhere, so I had to lay low. Unfortunately for me, I accidentally ran into a sweet berry bush. Ow! Suddenly, lightning struck down directly onto me, transforming me into the attack titan. I didn't know what was going on, but all I knew was that I wanted to destroy all other titans. I charged into the horde of titans and began to attack them one by one. In this form, I was incredibly powerful and was able to destroy some of the monsters in a couple of punches. I was hungry for violence and punched the titans one after another. After a lot of fighting, I reverted back to my human form just as a giant hairy titan appeared before me. Ooh, little titan. Who are you? I am the Beast Titan, and in 100 days, I'm going to use my immense power to turn your people into Titans. You can't do that! They're innocent! I'd like to see you stop me. He began to walk away. I wanted to chase him, but I felt too weak after my transformation. I passed out. On day two, I woke up in a field with a strange girl in front of me. Max, wake up. Who are you? What? It's me, Mikasa. You don't have time for this. There are Titans everywhere. I looked around and she wasn't kidding. There were easily hundreds. What do we do? We fight. Mikasa ran out into the field and began to slaughter titans left and right. She was amazing and truly a natural warrior. In the distance, a titan was approaching me at a high speed. Ah! How do I get away from this thing? What should I do, Mikasa? Use your ODM gear. Huh? Oh, right. It was a little bit of a rocky start, but I got the hang of it in no time. Aim for the nape of their neck. Following Mikasa's instructions, I latched onto the titan and swung with all of my strength. I did it. I had killed my first titan, and I was ready to finish off whatever titan came in my way. Yeah! Yeah! I began taking down titans one by one. Although they were huge, with my ODM gear, I was able to take them down with ease. After what felt like hours of titan hunting, we took down the last one. Boy, that was exhausting. On day three, I decided it was best to split away from Mikasa. If she knew I could turn into a titan, that would be the end of me. After walking for a bit, I came across a gate at the entrance of a massive wall. Wow, this place is huge. Welcome back to the Shigashida, cadet. I'm sorry about your mom. Oh, and uh, I guess your house, too. Oh, um, thank you. I walked past the gate to see a beautiful, sprawling city leading from one end of the wall all the way to the other. A lot of the houses were under construction, but I didn't think anything of it. I'd finally arrived at my house, and just like the guard said, it'd been reduced to rubble. Well, I guess it was time for an upgrade anyways. I started off by punching down some nearby trees. After getting all the resources I needed, I found a new location to build my house and began working on the foundation. Once that was finished, I built up the walls so I would have adequate protection for the night. I like it so far. On days four through seven, my house was off to a good start. I was then approached by a stern looking man. Who are you? I'm your commanding officer, Levi. Do you not remember me, newbie? Uh, no sir. Sorry sir, it won't happen again. Sir. Well, all right. I got my eye on you. Start patrolling the wall and report back to me if there's trouble. Do not engage with any abnormal titans. I got to work patrolling the walls, but nothing was really happening. In the distance, I saw a silhouette of a tall person running in my direction. It was a titan. Using my ODM gear, I quickly dashed out to it and finished him off. These titans are like zombies. I can't let the beast titan transform humanity into these. Just then, I spotted something in the distance. What is that? I spotted an unusual titan. Unlike the others, this one was walking on all fours. I knew I should have reported it to Levi, but with the way I was handling these titans, I could easily take out this one myself. I flew with the titan full speed ahead. Okay, you dumb titan, it's time to... Time to what? Time to meet my maker? What an unoriginal thing to say. All you island devils are the same. What the? You can talk? Yes, I am the cart titan. Out of the nine of us, only a few of us can retain dialect in our titan form. I'm one of the lucky ones, I guess. What do you want with me? I want the founding titan's power. Give it to me now. I don't know what you're talking about. Then why am I wasting my time talking to you when I can just eat you and go on my way? I won't let you do that. 
Without hesitation, I immediately transformed into my Titan form and prepared myself for battle. On days 8 through 11, I engaged in battle with the Cart Titan. This Titan was incredibly fast. I could hardly keep up with its speed. You may have been able to defeat the pure Titans with ease, but not me. If I want to beat this Titan, I'm going to need to try harder. Watch their movements carefully. Get used to their pattern. The card titan was incredibly fast and was able to charge at me so quick it was hard to dodge. Each attack she landed dealt massive damage. Without my regeneration, I would have been toast. I continued to try and fight her head on with my fists, but I quickly came to the realization that a mindless rampage would not be enough to defeat her. I had to attack, but only at the right moments. I calmed myself, and when she charged in, I dodged swiftly to the side and landed a few blows. The two of us went back and forth for a while. It was anyone's game. I managed to get myself together. I waited for the right moment to attack and charged in. One punch after another, I didn't give them any time to counter. With one final punch, I finally defeated the cart titan. Its body evaporated and I began to feel all fuzzy. Well, what's happening to me? My name is Peak Finger. When I was very young, my father got sick. I hated seeing him suffering, so I decided I was going to do something about it. I enrolled in the military, and I was lucky enough to be chosen as one of the nine titans. Because of this, I was able to pay for the treatment he needed. Now, as the cart titan, I have immeasurable endurance. Unlike other titans, I can stay in my form for months at a time. If the mission demands it, I imagine I could stay in this form for years. Above all else, I am fast. Faster than any other titan. The Nine Titans are the only intelligent specimens. It seems if other people were to transform into Titans, they would become mindless zombies. But there is one truth that holds strong. All of the intelligent Titans are human. Whoa! So the Nine Titans are all humans and their leader is the Beast? But why do they want to transform all humans into Titans? Suddenly, I gained 10 additional hearts and felt even lighter on my feet. I guess with each intelligent titan I kill, I'll absorb their power and memories. I better keep fighting to learn more! On days 12 through 14, I reported back to Commander Levi to tell him about my sweet victory. I did it, Commander! I single-handedly defeated the cart titan all on my own! You did what? I know, right? I'm kinda awesome! That's being reckless. I told you to report back to me if there was any trouble. You could have been killed. <sighs> As punishment, you'll be repeating your training until you understand the meaning of working with a team. Aww, but I can easily take Titans out as a tight- What? Oh, uh, nothing. I'll, I'll report the training right away. Gosh, I almost messed up. Levi would kill me if he knew I was a Titan. After talking to Commander Levi, I walked over to the training area. There were tons of other scouts just like me, and the instructor was especially scary. Welcome to training, maggots. This isn't a daycare. You're gonna work until you drop. Otherwise, those titans will eat you for breakfast. Sir, yes, yes sir. sir! The instructor started us off with a race around the training area. I thought I'd become a lot faster, but everyone started passing me up. You did great, Max. Thanks, but how did you know my name? Did you hit your head? It's me, Armin. I'm your childhood friend. Oh, right. Sorry about that. It's okay. Let's stick together. Training is gonna be tough. Next up, we had to train our balancing skills with the ODM gear. It was a pain in the butt, but we all managed to do it just fine. By the end of the balance training, I noticed that there was a girl eating a potato right next to me. Who are you? I'm Sasha. How? How? You want some? Uh, no thanks. Lastly was hand-to-hand -hand combat. I was partnered up with a blonde girl who always looked a little bit upset. To my surprise, she was an amazing fighter. I was secretly a Titan, but still she could keep up with my attacks. It was incredible! Within seconds, I found myself on my knees. Ouch! Armin came over to console me about my loss against the blonde girl. It's okay. Annie is almost as tough as Mikasa. Maybe fighting Titans is gonna be harder than I expected. Once training was all finished up, the scary instructor gave one final announcement. Tomorrow is your fourth and final test. Field work. Mess around and you'll get swallowed up out there. Dismissed! On days 15 through 18, I went to dinner with Armin. Hey Armin, could we talk for a little bit? I'm struggling to remember some stuff. Sure. Well, where do you want me to start? From the beginning. Well, it all started the day the walls fell. 
That day, humanity was suddenly reminded of the terror of being at their mercy, of the humiliation of being trapped inside a cage. The Titans wanted nothing more than to consume our kind. You ran home the minute you saw the breach, but when you arrived, it was too late. Your mother was already being consumed by a Titan. You begged Lieutenant Hannes to save her, but he was frozen in place, terrified of the giant in front of him. <sighs> That's why you and Mikasa joined the military corps. To kill all titans and liberate humanity. Thank goodness we managed to patch the hole and restore Shiganshina. That's right. How could I forget? But what happens if there's an intelligent titan? Ah, don't say stuff like that. Intelligence is the one thing we have over those monsters. If they had the brain to back up their advances, we would be in serious trouble. I guess you're right. Sorry. On days 19 through 22, I found myself stuck in a dream. My father was standing beside me holding a syringe. Dad? What? What's going on here? Listen to me, son. Find the basement and you'll find out the truth. The basement? What are you talking about? Just trust me, my son. People will be after you. Powerful, powerful people. Control your new powers. Find the basement and take down the evil in this world. Wait, Dad, I'm confused. Tell me more. We don't have time for this. My basement and the other intelligent titans have the truth to all of this. I woke up in a cold sweat, wondering what the heck that dream was. What a nightmare. But why was my dad telling me to go to our basement? I was worried about what it could mean, but I needed rest. I decided to shrug it off for now and hit the hay. On days 23 through 25, it was time for the final test. I headed over to the training area and received a quick briefing from the instructor. I was assigned to a small group, consisting of Armin and Reiner. Nice to meet ya. I'm Max. Nice to meet you, Max. I'm Reiner. Let's do some good work out there. All right, team, here's the plan. I think we're all able to take care of the Titans on our own, so we're going to split up. Let's do this. It was my team's turn to go into the field and start our test. Following Armin's plan, we went ahead and split up. I swiftly killed two Titans in my vicinity. Unfortunately, it was too early to celebrate my success. I heard a scream off in the distance. It was Reiner. He was cornered by one of the Titans. Ah! I quickly latched onto the Titan and swung a grenade, saving Reiner from its clutches. Oh, oh, thanks, Max. I thought I was a goner. No problem. I'm just glad you're safe. I went on to kill a few more Titans, completing our task. We reported back to our instructor, and standing beside him was Commander Levi. You did fine work saving Reiner, newbie. Oh. Thank you, sir. Your team has shown that they can hold up their own weight, for the most part. I have a special task for you guys. I will be giving more details in the upcoming days. Stay alert. We'll do our best, sir. This mission sounds important. I wonder what Levi has in store for us. On days 26 through 29, I went home. With the training being completed, there wasn't much else to do other than work on my house and await Levi's orders for the next mission. I went back to the cave and gathered more stone. Sadly, I had chopped all the trees in the usual spot, so I had to go outside the walls to get more. After gathering the resources for the house, I came across a herd of sheep. I slayed them one after the other. Sweet! I got so much wool and mutton. I'm gonna eat well tonight. Suddenly, titans began emerging from the horizon. Oh no! I immediately sprung into action and used my ODM gear to finish off the first titan and then quickly charged at the others. With great speed, I managed to slice down titan after titan. However, even with my fast attacks, they still outnumbered me. They were able to hit me with their powerful attacks, but luckily my titan regeneration abilities kept my health high. I continued to propel myself forward, slicing down every titan that dared to challenge me. Is that the best you got? They may have been big, but they were no match for my two powerful blades. After an intense battle, I managed to take out the final one. That's the last of them. It was easy peasy, like slicing through butter. With my new materials in hand, I returned back to Shiganjina and began working on my house. First, I started with a roof. Since I still didn't have a ton of materials, I kept it simple. Still though, I liked the result. After it was in place, I began to work on a proper bedroom for myself. After placing the final pieces, I took a step back to see my beautiful work of art. This is starting to look a lot more homey. Max! I quickly ran outside to see who was calling out my name. It was Armin and Mikasa. They were here with some good news. Max, thank goodness you're here. Commander Levi is ready to start the mission. Count me in. 
On days 30 through 32, we met with Commander Levi. Standing before him, he gave us the briefing. Thank you for meeting me on such short notice, cadets. I wouldn't be asking you three this unless it was absolutely necessary, but I need you to exit Wall Maria. What? Are you insane? There have been reports of a powerful Titan. One that, if left unchecked, would be catastrophic to our city. It is our duty to stomp this threat out immediately. How exactly is this one more of a threat? It is said she has more intelligence than your average Titan, so stay alert. Yes, yes sir. sir! We all left the walls on horseback and were immediately greeted by pure Titans. One of the pure Titans managed to separate me from the others, but I knew I'd be fine. In the distance, I spotted it, the female Titan Commander Levi was talking about. The others could easily handle themselves, especially with Mikasa there. I took this opportunity to pursue her. It'll be easier to fight her in my Titan form if I'm the only one there. This is my chance to find out more about the intelligent Titans. I have to gain more memories and weaken the beast's evil forces. On days 33 through 35, I chased the female Titan on horseback. She was fast, but not as fast as the cart Titan. Once I closed the gap, I left off my horse and used my ODM gear to propel myself towards her. Take this! I used the sun to my advantage in order to blind her, but she was agile. She'd avoid my attacks like it was nothing. Even worse, the blunt force of her punches knocked out a good chunk of my health. I could tell this Titan was well trained. If I was going to beat her, I'd have to be as persistent as possible. The fight continued. I slashed down into her, but it was almost as if nothing had happened. She was able to harden her skin, preventing damage from my blades. I can't cut through! It's like she has diamond armor! That's right. Your pathetic blades are worthless against me. Wait! You can talk? Just like the card titan. Why are you doing this? Us intelligent titans are tired of hiding in the shadows. We will bring humanity to light. You are special too, Max. Join us. I don't fight against humanity. I stand with them. Suit yourself. With that, she started attacking me once again. I knew at this rate I was good as finished. Thankfully, I had my secret weapon. Lightning struck down from the sky and I transformed into a titan. <laughs> On days 36 through 39, I was in the middle of combat with the female Titan. Even in my Titan form, she was tough. Punch after punch we fought, with both of us getting some powerful hits in. Her skin continued to harden regardless. She was agile, using an impressive roll ability to evade my attacks. Oftentimes, I would think I was closing the gap, but she would expertly move to avoid taking major damage. Thankfully, I had the power of the Cart Titan on my side. Using the speed I had gained from our previous battle, I was able to deal blows faster than she could harden her skin. After a long battle, I finally took her down and absorbed her power. My name is Annie Leonhardt. As a young girl, my father would put me through intense training to make me the most powerful warrior possible. Once I was old enough to join the military, and thanks to my fighting abilities, I was selected as one of the lucky few to become one of the Nine Titans. As the female Titan, I have immense amounts of endurance, and the ability to strengthen specific parts of my body with my heart and skin. Now that I am part of the Beast Titans army, we seek out more humans to grow our numbers. Once our work is done, all remaining humans will be transformed into mindless titans that the Beast Titan controls. I came out of the vision, now in a completely different place. Where am I? More importantly, the intelligent titans can control normal titans? That means the beast titan is converting humanity to make his own personal army. I can't let that happen. I have to keep taking down the intelligent titans to reveal the beast's true form. Just then, I gained 10 hearts as well as the roll ability of the female titan. Sweet! Max! Uh -oh. Before I could get caught, I returned to my human form. Max, did you take down that titan all by yourself? Yes, sir! You're just a newbie, though. Are you sure you're not hiding something? Of course not! What? Well, expect another mission in the near future. Dismissed. On days 40 through 42, I returned to my home and decided it was finally time to do some building. I started off by making the house bigger and added a kitchen with everything I could need. Afterwards, I made a small storage room to hold all of my treasures and supplies. Not too shabby. Just then, I recalled my dream from a while ago. I wasn't sure why, but it felt like it was something important. I think it holds the secrets to the next Titan's whereabouts. I went mining in search of any sort of secret basements underground. As I dug, I managed to find coal and iron. Score! I quickly smelted the iron, then made an iron pickaxe. Afterwards, I kept searching and even found diamond. I used my loot to craft a bit of armor for myself and continued going deeper. 
After a while, I finally discovered the basement from my dream. What secrets do you hold? I investigated for a while, without any luck, until finally discovering a strange syringe inside of a chest. What is this? Dad, please, don't go like this! Max, use this power for good. No! Wait, what was that? Is my dad dead? Ugh, I can't remember. On days 43 through 45, I returned home to find Levi and Reiner waiting outside for me. Today you will be assigned a new mission to eliminate a high-profile titan. You and Reiner will be eradicating it. Let's do our best! I'll be keeping an eye on the clock. If things get hairy, I'm sending reinforcements. Yes, yes sir! The two of us left the safety of the walls and went on our quest. While exploring, we slayed a titan or two, but overall it was quiet. That's strange. Levi said the Titan would be close. Oh, he's much closer than you think. Suddenly, Reiner transformed into the Armored Titan. What? There are more traitors than just Annie? The Nine are all undercover in the Shigan Shina and your military. We are all sleeping right under your noses. Does the same go for the Beast Titan? Like I tell you, prepare to die. On days 46 through 49, I was battling it out with the Armored Titan. I tried my best to use my ODM gear to land the attack, but my blades couldn't penetrate his skin. This isn't working! I have to transform! I transformed into my Titan form and resumed the battle. Now in my super form, I did my best to penetrate his thick skin. Still, even as a titan, it was difficult. On top of this, his movement was of similar skill to the female titan. He was quick and was able to dodge and weave at will. I pressed on, using anger as my primary weapon. I couldn't believe Reiner was a traitor. Enraged, I began to punch him as hard as I could over and over and over again. This wore him down. I could tell he was about to lose. It was close, but I managed to land the finishing blow, granting the Titan soul for myself. When I was younger, I used to have a best friend. We would do everything together. One day, a Titan killed my friend, and I vowed that I would do anything to become stronger. After a lot of training, I managed to join the military, where I was able to gain that power through the skills of the Armored Titan. As the Armored Titan, my skin is stronger than even diamonds. Thanks to the Beast Titan, we have already begun to infiltrate the Survey Corp. Soon enough, we'll take down the humans from the inside. His memory sequence ended, and I gained 10 hearts. Awesome. But there are undercover titans hiding inside the military. I have to find out who they are and fast. On days 50 through 53, Mikasa and Armin arrived at the scene. A titan? Where's Max? <laughs> I couldn't speak in my titan form, so I tried to run away instead. Unfortunately for me, Armin was able to block my path. Now, Mikasa! Mikasa ran in for the kill, but I knew I couldn't keep this up, otherwise someone would get hurt. I transformed back into a human. Wait, Max, is that you? Yeah, I'm a titan. I explained to my friends how I had the ability to turn into a titan and that the beast titan was threatening the safety of humanity. Let me get this straight. There are nine intelligent titans, but you're one of them. So would that mean there's eight? I'm not sure. The other titans are treating me differently. I think there's something deeper. I think it's all related to my dad somehow. Well, we'll help you get to the bottom of it. You mean, you don't want to kill me? Of course not. You're our best friend, and we know you will never hurt us, titan or not. I wouldn't say the same for Commander Levi, though. If he finds out, I'm dead meat. Our lips are sealed. This stays between us. Thank you both. After my conversation with my friends, I reported back to Levi to tell him about the Armored Titan. So we have traitors in our midst. We'll have to keep a keen eye on these Titan-human hybrids. I'll be sure we eliminate them all. Uh, right. He cannot find out about my secret. On days 54 through 56, Mikasa and Armin helped train my titan form in a nearby biome. If I wanted to defeat the remaining five titans, I needed to get stronger. Here goes nothing! Thanks to the power of the cart titan, I was able to move crazy fast. I'd say that went well. The next test will be your endurance. With the test of endurance, Mikasa used her expert skills to hack and slash at me. My durability had been raised immensely thanks to the new armor I gained. Even after hitting me over and over again, I was unfazed. You're as tough as the armored titan now. Amazing! For the last test, I wanted to see if I could talk. The cart titan mentioned that of the nine intelligent titans, some of them retained the ability to speak. I felt like I could do it if I put my mind to it. Say, Mikasa is cool. No, Mikasa is cool. How about you try something simple? Say, Max. Max! You did it! 
I gained three more hearts. I felt stronger already. I could comfortably control my Titan form better than before and even speak. Before I had time to celebrate, Levi appeared. What's an intelligent Titan doing so close to the walls? Come here, you beast. On days 57 through 59, I was being attacked by Levi. I tried my best to fend for myself, but I didn't want to hurt him. What are you doing standing around? Help me take down this titan. My friends tried to plead with the commander, but he wouldn't listen. He continued his onslaught on me. I didn't want to fight, so I tried my best to simply evade his attacks. Unfortunately for me, each slash of his blade hit like a truck. After some back and forth, I eventually used my super speed to escape from his onslaught. Run while you can, monster. I'll take you down next time you come close to my scouts. I managed to get away from Levi, but I was alone outside the walls. I better keep in my titan form for safety. Just then, I spotted a strange titan walking around in the distance. Something about her set her apart from the other common titans around me. This doesn't look good. I better check it out. On days 60 through 63, I arrived at the place where I saw the unusual titan. It looked different from the others. I could tell this one was going to be a lot more difficult to handle. Well, if it isn't the traitor, you must think you're special now that you've gained more power than us. What is that supposed to mean? Don't play dumb with me. Join us in our quest to take over the world or die a traitor. The only one dying is you. Enraged by the Titan's words, I charged straight at her, swinging my fists. It felt like I was hardly doing any damage. Just like the armored Titan, she was extremely durable. She used a massive trident and was able to maneuver it around her like magic. She gained the advantage over me with the distance of a throwable weapon. Again and again, she would throw her ice-like trident, causing me massive pain. Luckily, I was able to use my speed to evade a lot of them, but I had to think of a way around this. We kept at it, charging at each other repeatedly. I could tell I wasn't doing much damage, while she continually chipped down my hearts more and more. It was so hard to dodge her abilities. Her skills with the ice spear were unprecedented, being able to swing it around her torso at the top of her head as if she was a master of combat. Something seems off. She's fighting so freely without protecting herself. I managed to get a successful strike, but she still was unfazed. Why didn't that work? On days 64 through 67, my battle with the Warhammer Titan raged on. My attacks on her nape aren't working. She must be hiding it elsewhere. I began to attack other parts of her body in an attempt to locate her weak point. If I didn't know where it was then, I just had to try them all. Of course, she barely gave me any room to strike. Twirling her spear, I was able to maneuver around with a small gap between me and the tip of her blade. Noticing that she wasn't able to reach me, she began throwing her spear to knock me back and lower my hearts. With the speed of the card tight, I charged in and let out a barrage of punches, giving her no time to react. I finally located where she was and focused my attacks on her ankle. Just like that, the Warhammer Titan was no more, and her memories were now a part of me. My name is Lara Tiber. I am the youngest daughter of the Tiber noble family. When I turned 13, I inherited the power of one of the nine titans. With this power, I was able to create a variety of weapons from the ground below, making me the most versatile of all the titans. I had always felt alone until I met him. He understood the burdens of carrying great power and showed me the way. I now know that my duty lies in helping the Beast Titan take back the world. Wait, that boy must have been the Beast Titan. But what was his name? I have to know his true form before something bad happens. Just then, I gained 10 hearts and the Warhammer Titan Spear. Sick! This is gonna be awesome for my next fight. On days 68 through 70, I returned home and decided to finally finish up my build. I started by displaying some of my Survey Corps gear in picture frames. It would serve as a symbol for all of my hard work. Next, I used carpet to brighten up the place, as well as crafted lanterns to place around. With that, my build was finally complete. This place is cozy. Not too bad. After all my hard work, I felt a bit hungry. I didn't want to eat my usual, so I figured I would see what the market had to offer. There were lots of options, but I ended up purchasing a fresh loaf of bread. Finally, it's time to eat. Are you gonna finish that? I looked over to see a strange girl staring at me. Well, I haven't even started eating it. Aren't you that weird potato girl from training? I'm not weird. I just appreciate good food. Where did you find that potato anyways? On the floor. Gross. Look, if you give me that bread, I'll show you something cool. Aw, oh, man. I can't say no to cool things. I gave her the bread, and she gobbled it up in a second. <laughs> oh, that hit the spot. Now come with me. I followed her to find that she had led me to a massive garden full of potatoes. For sharing with me, I'll now share with you. Take all the potatoes you want. Wow, thanks. 
I gathered up plenty of potatoes and headed back home. When I arrived, I found Mikasa waiting for me. Max, I remembered something about your father that could help you. On days 71 through 73, Mikasa was telling me vital information about my father. I was thinking about what you told me, and I remembered there was a day you and dad went to the forest together. It was the last time either of us ever saw him. Huh, that does ring a bell. Maybe if I check it out in person, I'll learn something. With my new lead, I headed into the forest to see what sort of secrets it might hold. During my travels, I found an area with a small grouping of titans. It's almost as if they're protecting something. I better start here. I flew into the fray with my ODM gear and sliced each of their napes one by one. At this point, I'd become an expert with my mobility gear and blades. I was able to soar through the air effortlessly, swooping in to slice the nape of each of the titans. Still though, there were many of them, so at times, they would get a hit or two on me. Still, I kept at it, flying, weaving, and slicing whenever the opportunity presented itself. With one final swing, I was able to take out the last titan, leaving nothing but a syringe alone on the ground. Another syringe? What does that mean? What did you want to show me, Dad? This syringe holds the power of both the Founding and Attack Titans. And these two intelligent titans will empower you, so you can take out the greatest evil of all. Whoa, I feel weird. Dad! You'll pay for that! Dad, please don't go like this! Max, the use of this power for good. No! How could I forget? My dad gave me my power and died in the process. Thanks to him, I hold the power of two intelligent titans. That's right. Well, not even that will be enough to stop me. On days 74 through 77, I was standing face to face with the beast titan himself. Why do you hate humanity so much? What did they do to you? What haven't they done? They are the demons of this world. They corrupt their own kind and destroy everything they touch. They must be annihilated. And what about those who are innocent? Not all humans are evil monsters. Enough! You know you've been a real pain in the neck. You've taken out over half of my finest titans. You won't know real pain until I take you out. At least I'm free. You have to live in fear of what the town thinks of you. Once your secret gets out, you'll be dead meat. Now, if you let me transform everyone, then that little problem goes away. I'll never let you do that. I'm gonna protect the people inside the walls. I propelled myself towards the massive monster, but he was able to dodge my surprise attack. You'll regret that little stunt. Just then, the beast summoned a titan with a massive jaw and ran away. I knew what I had to do. I immediately lunged into battle. On days 78 through 81, I was in combat with the jaw titan. I knew this had to end quickly if I stood any chance catching up with the beast titan. At first, I tried just using my Odium gear to do some initial damage, but it became obvious very quickly that I was gonna have to call on the big guy. I transformed into my titan form and continued the fight. Move! I knocked back the jaw titan with my strength, but he was persistent and did the same back. His attack dealt massive damage, so much so I would fly into the air. This wasn't an ordinary titan, he was definitely one of the nine intelligent ones. I'll have to deal with the beast another day. You're mine! I charged in at the jaw titan with all of my might, but he managed to dodge, leaving me defenseless. The jaw titan took the chance to whittle down my hearts with a barrage of attacks. I knew if he kept this up, I would be finished. I managed to attack him back, matching the damage he had dealt to me. We were even, but this battle wasn't close to over. We continued to land hit after hit on each other, but as we continued, I noticed I was getting the one up. Once the jaw titan was low enough on health, he began to run away. I can't let him escape. I need to find out more about the beast titan. On days 82 through 85, I chased after the jaw titan to finish what we had started. Thanks to my increased speed, I managed to cut him off and resume the battle. The jaw titan immediately lunged my neck, but one final strike was enough to take him down. Upon his defeat, I absorbed his soul as well as the memory he was holding. My name is Porco Galliard. From a young age, I completed to obtain the power of the Jaw Titan. My efforts eventually paid off. I can dodge with incredible ease as well as crush anything with my jaws. Mr. Jaeger, how can I help you? It has been completed. The serum for the Beast Titan is complete. Are you sure you want to give that to him? He's your own- Don't let it bother you, my friend. This is just another step towards our goals. 
How does he know my dad? And just who is the Beast Titan? I need to find out more. Suddenly, I gain two hearts and the ability to jump super high. Thank you for your power, John Titan. I'll use it for good. I was about to leave when suddenly I heard the sound of ODM gear in the distance fast approaching me. Mikasa? To my surprise, Levi flew in. I found you, monster. Prepare to die. On days 86 to 89, I was being ambushed by Commander Levi. I did my best to duck and weave away from his powerful attacks. I didn't want to hurt him, but I couldn't let him know my secret. During the fray, I realized he was moving strangely. He must be low on gas. Maybe he'll retreat. Just then, two smaller titans arrived and attacked. Normally, they would have been a piece of cake. But without gas, Levi was dead meat. I immediately ran into action and began to fight off the runs. Being the powerful attack titan, I took them both out with ease. Once the dust finally settled, Levi stared at me in confusion. Did a titan just save me? What? Who are you? Without another word, I transformed back into my human self. I could tell that Levi was no longer a threat. Max? I guess that explains how you took out all those titans as a newbie. I'm sorry. It's a long story, but I have no bad intentions. I'm using my powers for good. <sighs> Even so, this still compromises the safety of our people. I'm afraid we need to run this by the judge. On days 90 through 92, I was sitting in trial before a judge who would dictate whether I was to live or die. This boy is a danger to our society. He is the culmination of the very creatures we are trying to eradicate. Please have him removed to the safety of our families. What does the defense have to say? Your Honor, Max has demonstrated great control of his Titan form and has saved both my life and the lives of other Survey Corps members. For these reasons, I believe he should be spared. I see. If you, Commander Levi, have this to say, then it must be true. But I cannot also ignore the major threat that poses having a Titan in our walls. Well, what if we are able to use his Titan form to our advantage? What do you mean? What if we use Max as our weapon to fight back? Why, that's the most wild idea I've heard all day. But how could I refuse? Very well. If Max can eliminate the Colossal Titan, then he's free to stay in our city. Looks like I know who my next target is. On days 93 through 95, I left the courthouse ready to begin my next mission. However, something felt off. I looked up into the sun to find the Colossal Titan looming over the wall. I guess Colossal isn't just a name. He's massive! I rushed out to the gates, ready to confront the final titan that stood between me and the beast. This is my city! Back down now! You! You're the one who's been killing all my allies! Only myself and the beast titan remain! Why? Why do you betray your own kind? Because you guys want to hurt the lives of innocent people! This world is no longer built for them, nor is it suited for someone like you! Your journey ends here! The Colossal Titan sent in tons of Titans to do his bidding, then backed up to watch the fight. You coward! Fight me yourself! With no other options, I rushed in to fight. Charging forward, I zipped back and forth between the Titans. Every time they got too close, I shot up into the air and spun back at them with my sharp blades. They stumbled around, trying to catch me. But I was too fast, and managed to roll and jump out of harm's way. Each one I slashed went down easily. They kept on coming, but I kept on slaying. I fought off Titans left and right, but no matter what, it seemed like there was no end in sight. Come on! You guys surely get tired eventually! On days 96 through 98, I transformed into the Attack Titan to continue my battle with the Colossal Titan's goons. Although they had me in numbers, I had them in pure skill. I ran up to the horde of Titans, punching as furiously as I could. At this point, I had mastered my Titan form. My punches were consistent and deadly. I took down Titan after Titan, barely flinching when they did damage to me. I was unstoppable! I finally managed to take the last of the pure Titans out then running up to the Colossal and killing him in one punch. Sweet! Another memory! My name is Bertolt Hoover. Ever since I was young, I was always a skillful gunman. So, when I was placed into the military, I was quickly selected to house one of the Nine Titans. As the Colossal Titan, I have heaps of strength, stronger than anything else on this planet. And with its strength, I'm unstoppable. I remember the day I met Zeke like it was yesterday. He and I met when we were still young adults. He was eager for me to meet his father. Apparently, he was a man who knew more about Titans than anyone else, and even possessed the power of multiple intelligent Titans. He always thought that one day he would possess all of these amazing powers, but that was passed to his younger brother instead. He was only left with a single intelligent Titan's power. 
Wait, the Beast Titan and I have the same father? Then that means we're brothers? On day 99, I reported back to Levi and informed him that the mission was a success. The judge will be pleased with this. You're free to stay in these walls for as long as you like. Thank you, sir. But I also found something else out. I explained to him all of the memories I had obtained from each of the Titans and my newfound discovery that the Beast Titan was in fact my older brother. I see. So your battle isn't over yet. You don't have much time before the Beast Titan completes his evil plans. Exactly. I need your help. Come with me. I think there's something I need to show you. I followed Levi to another area where I found all of my classmates waiting for me. What is all of this? We've been working hard to help find a way to give you an edge on the Beast Titan. It required the help of everyone, but we were able to make you this. Armin then handed me brass knuckles. Huh? Why? Our theory is that they'll grow with you when you become the Attack Titan. If so, you should be able to inflict fast, powerful damage against the Beast. Wow, this is incredible. Thank you so much. Everyone gave me their final wishes of luck, but all of it was interrupted by the sound of a huge crash. On day 100, I ran outside to find the wall had been breached by the Beast Titan. Yes, finally it's time for me to transform all of you pathetic worms into my army. Back down now, Zeke. Looks like you know the truth, brother. Yes, our father gave you the power of two titans and left me with only one. That's no reason to hurt people! I'm not hurting people. I'm simply giving them the same strength we have. There's a difference between the nine titans and the normal ones, and you know that. They don't want to be mind-controlled by you. What a shame. They soon won't have a choice. I was sick of this, so I transformed into the Attack Titan and began charging at the beast. Zeke had me beaten size by a large amount, but because of his mass, his punches were much slower than mine. Especially with my new brass knuckles, I was able to pummel faster than ever before. Punch after punch, I weakened the beast more and more. Once I thought I had him, the beast titan started to throw giant boulders at me, disorienting me and chipping away pieces of my health. I knew I couldn't have him throwing massive rocks inside city limits, so I had to move the fight elsewhere. Hey Zeke, you want my powers? Come and get them! I ran outside the walls to protect the civilians of Shiganshina. Luckily, the Beast Titan followed and our fight continued. Outside the city, I was more determined than ever to take down the Beast Titan. I threw punches one after the other. The Beast Titan seemed angry, throwing rock after rock at me. That wasn't gonna stop me though. I ran at him with the fury of every intelligent Titan. I could tell he was weak, and one final blow was all I needed to defeat him. I ran in and punched him as hard as I could, killing him. After everyone was safe from the Beast Titan, I started to feel myself being transported to a different anime dimension. On day one, I was leaving my cozy cottage in the mountains to gather some firewood for my family. I won't be long. Be home before dinner. Be safe, big bro. We love you. I set off into the woods as a heavy blizzard began. I got to gathering with my trusty axe. I love my family. Just then, a massive explosion went off in the direction of my home. What was that? I ran back home as fast as I could. But to my horror, my home was destroyed and my entire family had been killed. Who could do such a thing? Oh, one got away. I turned around and discovered a horrible demon standing over my only surviving sister, Nezuko. My name is Musan, and in 100 days, I'll overrun this entire world with demons. Nezuko, finish him. Muzan vanished, leaving me with my sister. But something wasn't right. <laughs> Nezuko? <laughs> Nezuko lunged at me, leaving me no choice but to run. Muzan had turned my only surviving sister into a demon. On day two, I was being chased and running through the snow. With nowhere else to go, I was cornered by Nezuko. I could see it in her eyes that she was consumed by her new demonic powers. <laughs> Wait, Nezzy! I'm your brother! I know there's still good in you somewhere! In that moment, Nezuko's eyes flashed from demon to normal eyes. Yes! I knew you were in there! Suddenly, a sword flew in, striking Nezuko right in front of me. What the? Just then, a mysterious man appeared from behind the trees. My name is Giyu, and I am a demon slayer. That demon must die. He began rushing towards Nezuko, but I managed to cut him off. Stop! That's still my sister! Fine. If you truly want to protect your sister, you'll need to train hard to become a demon slayer. Giyu walked up and tied a piece of bamboo to Nezuko's mouth. This will soothe her appetite to some extent. Now go over the mountain. If you can both survive the heavy snow and demons, then you'll get trained. Demons? Giyu ran off, leaving Nezuko and I alone in the cold. 
On day three, I traveled through the mountain with Nezuko. Looks like the sun is gonna rise soon. <laughs> Uh-oh, demons burn up in the sun. Let's find cover. The two of us continued forward until coming across a nice cottage. Hello, anyone home? I took a peek inside, but nobody was there. Perfect. Wait, what's that smell? I always had a stronger nose than other people, and my trusty sniffer was picking up something strange coming from the back of the house. I investigated further and discovered a demon eating someone. <laughs> ah! The demon lunged at me full force, so I ran outside and took out my axe. He was incredibly fast and had the ability to send a flurry of slashing attacks at me. I did my best to hold my own, but it was impossible. I only had an axe to defend myself and the demon could regenerate any damage I managed to deal. Despite all of my efforts, the demon was too powerful. Just as I thought I was finished, Nezuko jumped into the fray. As a demon, Nezuko was now able to use an explosive blood art that caused massive amounts of damage. She fought back with her own demonic strength, commencing an epic battle between the two powerful entities. The two of them clashed at each other like animals, but Nezuko gradually began to overpower him. Thanks to Nezuko's new demon strength, she was able to finish them off. That was close. Thanks, Nezi. <clears throat> Just then, the sun began to rise over the horizon. Nezuko bolted inside to safety while the demon's corpse evaporated into thin air. The sun is really dangerous for demons. We better find the trainer at night, for Nezuko's sake. On days four through six, Nezuko and I traveled through the mountain. On the way, I killed some cows, made a furnace, and cooked up their meat. We continued walking, and after a while, arrived at a small home. There, a strange man in a red mask was waiting. That must be the trainer! The two of us walked up to him. I was expecting you, Max. Nezuko. My name is Orokodaki. Please train me. I need to become a demon slayer to take down Muzan. Muzan? But that's the demon king. I don't care. I have to avenge my family. I can see your resolve. Very well. Let the training begin. Orokodaki took me to a giant waterfall with parkour platforms set up. You must navigate this course without falling a single time. Otherwise, you fail. I did what he told me, navigating the course the best I could. But each attempt I failed, he forced me to start over. I'm getting closer. I know this is the one. I jumped through the course carefully, landing on each platform. Some of the jumps were tight, but I finally managed to complete the course. Yes! You're ready for your next test. On days seven through nine, Urokodaki took me to a clearing with a large piece of obsidian and handed me a bamboo sword. If you wish to go to final selection, you must break this obsidian with your blade. What? But that's impossible! Urokodaki left, leaving me alone with the obsidian. Giving up now? How can you call yourself a man? I turned around to discover a strange boy and girl standing before me. Who are you? I'm Sabito, and this is Makomo. You're weak. Suddenly, Sabito attacked me! He was a skilled swordsman and landed swift attacks onto me with his blade every opening he had. I did my best to block him, but his skill was incredible. The two of us went back and forth, dodging and slashing at each other. For a while, neither one of us was giving in, but gradually, I began to get outmatched. I fought as hard as I could, but even with my draining, the boy was overpowering me. Don't give up. Control your breathing. I listened to Makamo's advice and caught my breath, calming me down to approve my evasion. With my new control over my breathing, I was finally able to get the one-up on Sabito, winning me the battle. What was that for? I was unlocking your full potential. Break the obsidian now. I did as I was told, and I was able to break the obsidian like it was glass. Whoa, thank you. I turned around to notice that the two children were gone. That's odd. It's almost like they're ghosts. I returned to Urokodaki and told him that I had completed my training. You did well, Max. Final selection starts tomorrow. Take these as your reward. Urokodaki gave me the mask and uniform of his clan, granting me two additional hearts as well as a brand new sword. Thank you for everything. It's time for final selection. On days 10 through 12, I arrived at the final selection. There, we are surrounded by wisteria trees and my future demon slayer allies. This is beautiful. Just then, two twins began speaking before us. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the final selection. selection. Your task is to survive in these woods until daylight. This area is filled with powerful demons. Stay on your toes. Good, Good luck. With that, we entered the forest, officially beginning our test. I think this is a good chance to make new friends. I approached one of my comrades. Hi, I'm Max. Hi, I'm... Suddenly, the hand demon popped out of nowhere and killed them. Ah! Yeah, you look weak. You're as good as dead. 
Hey, I'm new to this. Nice mask. It reminds me of two punks I killed. They wore ones just like that. You killed Tabito and Makamo? You pay! I took out my blades and lunged at the hand demon. I began to slash him with my new sword, and to my surprise, swooshes of water flew from my blade. My training allowed me to use water breathing attacks. The hand demon's size wasn't just for show. He took multiple of my attacks and dealt powerful ones of his own. He was even able to send hands from the ground to wound me. I did my best to evade and counterattack with my own moves. After a long, difficult battle, I managed to slay the demon once and for all. I did it! Just then, the sun rose over the horizon. I had completed final selection successfully. I'm officially a demon slayer! On days 13 through 16, I returned to the wisteria trees to claim my prize. There, a few other demon slayers were also waiting. Congratulations! You are now demon slayers! As a reward, we were given new robes and a crow granting me three hearts. I'm tougher than ever. With final selection over, I decided it was time to build my own base. I searched for a safe spot and started by using the wood I had to build a simple structure. As I built, Urokodaki arrived with a strange basket on his back. How's Nezi doing? She's good. I have her here in the sunproof basket. Take it as my gift for becoming a demon slayer. Thanks! Now Nezuko can always be with me! Urokodaki gave me the basket and I got to work on a room safe from the sun's light. Once I was done, I put down my basket and let Nezuko out. All right, Nezzy, what do you think? Mm. While Nezuko got settled in, I located a herd of sheep which I slayed for their wool and meat. Once I was done, I returned home and cooked up their mutton for dinner. Yummy! I crafted a bed for myself and Nezuko, completing my start to the base. Not too shabby. Just then, my crow ran down to give me a message. It's time for your first mission! What? On days 17 through 18, I arrived at my first mission, which was in a massive mansion in the woods. Huh, I wonder what happened here. I walked around inside. There were twists and turns everywhere. It was like a maze. After a lot of walking, I found two other demon slayers. We were sent by our crows. I assume it was the same for you? Yeah, I'm Max. And you guys? Natsu. I'm Zenitsu. I'm glad to see friendly faces. The demon in this place is making my head spin. He must be really powerful. Hey! Get me out of here! Zenitsu ran off in a frenzy. Oh, come on. How dangerous can it be? Suddenly, the drum demon appeared and killed Natsu in a single blow. Uh-oh. I didn't have a moment to waste. I took out my blade and engaged in battle. I fought him off with my sword the best I could, but his drum power was insanely strong. The two of us exchanged blows for a while, but it was clear who was the more powerful one between us. He was way too strong for me. I fought as hard as I could, but I just couldn't beat him. One more blow from the demon and I was finished. I'm not strong enough! Just then, the walls broke down, revealing Zenitsu. But now, he was sleeping? I'm doomed! Thunder breathing, first form, thunderclap and flash. Zenitsu began to spark lightning even more and slashed into the drum demon at incredible speed, killing him instantly. Wow! That was amazing! Huh? What? Oh my gosh, you defeated the demon! Uh, sort of. You want to team up? <laughs> Sign me up! On days 19 through 21, I returned to the base with Zenitsu and got to work on his room. I made sure it was cozy and used any extra wool I had to craft him a bed. I managed to finish just as the sun was beginning to set. Thank you so much! Of course! Actually, I want you to meet someone. I placed down my basket and let Nezuko out to introduce herself. This is my sister, Nezuko. You've been with the cute girl this whole time? You shouldn't be taking my precious Nezuko into danger. Precious? Nezuko uh -huh. went back inside the basket, leaving Zenitsu alone and sad. I'm just gonna go now. I left the two of them together and went to go gather some materials. As I traveled, I discovered a massive village. Whoa, this place is huge. I explored the village further when I suddenly caught a whiff of something strange. Wait. Is that Muzan? I ran towards the scent and spotted the demon king in the crowd. Hey you! For what you did to my family and others, I'm gonna defeat you once and for all! Before he could respond, a young girl walked over to him. Daddy? Who's that guy? I'm sorry, sweetie. I don't recognize him. Wait, he has a human child? Muzan transformed a passerby into a demon who began to rampage. Muzan used the distraction to leave with his daughter. I wanted to follow, but I couldn't let innocent people get hurt. I rushed in and defeated the demon. Muzan had to wait another day. I returned to the base, more confused than before. Suddenly, my crow ran over in a frenzy. You're needed for a new mission! I'm on my way! 
On days 22 through 25, I arrived at a forest covered in spiderwebs with Zenitsu and Nezuko. This looks big. How about we split up? But, but, but. I parted ways with Zenitsu. I knew he was strong enough to hold his own. I explored the forest for any signs of demons. To my surprise, I spotted a strange guy with a boar's head killing a chicken. Ah, a demon! Demon! You're going down, punk! I placed down Nezuko's basket, and the two of us charged into battle. I used my sword to slash him down with my water-breathing techniques, but he fought unlike anyone else I had faced thus far. Instead of avoiding my attacks, he tried to beat me down with raw strength. He used his dual-wielded sword to hack away at me and his raw agility to try and overwhelm me with attacks. I wasn't fighting a swordsman, I was fighting an animal. After a while, Nezuko climbed out of the basket and tried to stop the fight. You're harboring a demon? No, please, she's my sister. I'm trying to slay the demon king so I can help her. <laughs> my name's Inosuke, I'm also a demon slayer. I was summoned here by my crow to take down a target. Then how about we work together? Fine, but I got my eye on you and that demon of yours. On days 26 through 28, I traveled deeper into the forest with Inosuke. We were both feeling worn down from our battle earlier, so we decided to set up camp to rest for the night. So Inosuke, what do you know about the demon we're gonna face? I don't know much. I only know that countless other demon slayers have fought them and never returned. Well, as a team, I'm sure we can win. I managed to fall asleep, but unfortunately, I had a nightmare. I was standing in an army of demon slayers just like myself with Gyu standing before us. You all have become extremely powerful. The demons will be no more. At this rate, Muzan is a goner. Suddenly, a strange spider demon I had never seen before attacked us. He was incredibly powerful and took down demon slayer after demon slayer like it was nothing. Just then, Giyu jumped into the fray. Stand down. He tried to fend off the spider demon with his powerful water breathing techniques. But even he wasn't strong enough to defeat the spider demon. He killed Giyu, leaving just the two of us. <laughs> How could you do this? Suddenly, the demon transformed into Muzan. Run while you still can, Max. I'll soon kill you and your precious sister. Ah! I woke up in a cold sweat. Thankfully, it was only a dream. I have to defeat this demon no matter what. On days 29 through 32, I decided to split up with Inosuke to search for the demon. I searched all through the forest, but I couldn't find anything. This is taking forever! I decided I might as well gather some materials while I was here, so I chopped some wood, killed some animals for food, and crafted myself some new tools. Wait, what's that? I caught the scent of a demon. I started running towards it as fast as I could. I ran through the forest until I came across a clearing. There they are. I spotted two spider demons talking beside a river, and I realized I recognized one of them. That's the demon from my nightmare. Father, there are trespassers in the forest. Be on alert. I'll stop at nothing to protect the family. Family? So there are multiple spider demons here? I watched as the spider demon walked away, leaving only the father next to the river. Unfortunately for me, I was spotted. Oh, I trespass her. I immediately sprung into action. Lunging at the spider father, I slashed directly at his chest. His skin was thick and hard to pierce, but I knew if I kept at it, I could get through it eventually. The spider father launched into the air and came crashing down on top of me, shooting webs around at his feet. Getting caught in the web slowed down my movement, making it hard to evade his attacks. As he was about to launch another attack, I took a deep breath. Exhaling, I gripped my sword and gripped my teeth. I spun at him as if I were a wheel of water. I had learned a new breathing technique. The father's incredible strength was beginning to be too much, but thankfully, Inosuke arrived. With Inosuke at my side, I was no longer just a punching bag. The spider father was still applying too much pressure, but luckily, we were starting to land large amounts of damage. The brute began to slow down, and with his focus on Inosuke, I came up behind him and released one final slash. Together, we took down the spider father. We did it! Ah, he got me good. Inosuke! On days 33 through 35, I quickly tended to Inosuke before he could succumb to his wounds. How are you feeling? After that mutton, much better. What a relief. I was really worried. Oh. While Inosuke rested, I set off in search of some help. As I looked, I found stranded bodies of demon slayers that had come before. What happened here? Suddenly, a group of demon slayers attacked me. Stop! I'm on your side! It's the mother spider demon. She's controlling our body like puppets. I tried to approach them, but I couldn't get close without them attacking me. Looks like I'll just have to take out the demon at its source. 
I used my swift training to avoid their attacks. They were my allies, so I didn't want to hurt them. As I evaded past them, I discovered the mother spider demon controlling them. Let my friends go! I charged into battle and used my water breathing techniques to try and overwhelm the demon. She may have looked small, but she was incredibly powerful. She was able to teleport to evade my attacks while also shooting web projectiles at me from afar. I did my best to evade them, but I'd already been worn down from my previous battle. Even so, I kept pushing as hard as I could. Just like the encounter with the father spider, it was starting to get close, but I knew I wasn't alone. Thunder breathing, first form, thunder clap and flash. Like lightning, Zenitsu arrived to help me out. The two of us used our breathing techniques to slash away at the mother spider demon. With two demon slayers now on her back, she was beginning to give in to our onslaught. After a fierce battle, together we took down the mother spider. We did it! Huh? What? Ah! Demon! Don't worry, she's dead. Just then, my nose picked up the smell of one more demon. That must be the one for my nightmare. Stay here and help the demon slayers that were being controlled. Got it! I pressed deeper into the forest on days 36 through 38, until finally stumbling upon a web-filled area. There, the young demon from before was waiting for me. You, you are the one that killed my parents! You dare cross Rui! You and your family have killed far more innocent lives! It ends here! Rui charged me with the intent to kill. Although he looked like a kid, Rui was able to bombard me with powerful web attacks. I did my best to evade them, while also using my water breathing techniques to counterattack when I could. Despite each powerful blow I landed, Rui still seemed unfazed by me. He kept attacking as if my sword did nothing. I could tell that he was unlike anything else I had faced before in raw power and intellect. How are you so strong? I'm a part of Muzan's most elite demons, the Kazuki. Rui managed to deal a powerful blow, leaving me with low health. Without a Nosuke or Zenitsu, I thought I was finished. Suddenly, my sword burst into flames and I performed a powerful sun technique. Hinokami Kagura, dance! What? But you're a water user. How can you do both? With one final blow, Rui fell to his death. That was close. It's not over, fool. I turned around and realized Rui was standing once again. He attacked me again, breaking my sword and leaving me completely vulnerable. You're done for, demon slayer. On days 39 through 42, I was about to be defeated by Rui. Nezuko, I'm sorry. Suddenly, an elegant swordsman flew by, causing Rui to collapse to the ground. Whoa, who is that? How is this possible? As Rui began to disintegrate, I was sent into a strange vision. Mom, can I please go out and play? I wish you could, my dear Rui, but you're far too sick to leave the house. I'd give anything to walk. Anything. Huh? Who said that? Give me your humanity and become a demon. You'll have all the power you could desire. And I can go outside and play? Every day, little one. Then I'm in. Perfect. Until we meet again. Mommy, you won't believe it! Sweetie, what happened? <gasps> no! Mom! What a shame. Oh well. She never loved you anyways. Was that Rui's past? Muzan manipulated him. Rest easy. <clears throat> I turned around and saw that the swordsman was attacking Nezuko. On days 43 through 45, the demon slayer was fighting Nezuko. Nezuko did what she could against the strange woman. As a demon, she had insane blood abilities, allowing her to strike with great speed and intensity. Unlucky for my little sister though, the demon slayer was immensely skilled. Her breathing technique allowed her to use strange insect powers, which wore Nezuko down over time. She did her best, but even with her powerful blood demon arts, Nezuko didn't stand a chance. I had to step in and help. Leave my sister alone! Nezuko fled and I charged in despite my injuries and broken sword. Unfortunately for me, I was instantly brought back to my knees. Who are you? I'm Shinobu. I'm the insect Hashira, meaning I'm one of the most elite demon slayers there are. Please, spare my sister. Your sister is a demon. I'm afraid you broke the demon slayer code. All demons must be killed. But Shinobu hit me on the head, knocking me out. On days 46 through 49, I woke up in a cage inside of the Hashira's courtyard. There, I was surrounded by nine Hashira. I discover this demon slayer carrying a demon with him. Concealing a demon is a clear violation of demon slayer code. They both should be executed. 
I just couldn't. I feel bad harming such a cute child. Please, Nezuko isn't like other demons. Yeah, right. She's probably just drooling for blood right now. Why you? What are you gonna do about it? Just then, I noticed Giyu in the crowd. Turns out he was a Hashira too. Giyu, please, you have to stand up for me. Nezuko is different from the other demons I've met. You knew about them beforehand. You should be punished too. Hush now, everyone. The leader revealed himself to the other Hashira. I've spent enough time with this demon to tell that she's not a threat. But Master Kagaya! Max, do you swear to protect the world from Muzan? Yes, sir. Then there is no issue here. Kagaya left and Sanami opened the cage for me. Master may trust you, but I'm watching. On days 50 through 53, I returned to the base to find both Inosuke and Zenitsu had already arrived safely. I'm so happy you're both okay! Of course I'm okay! Why would you not think I'm okay? You think you're better than me? Nezuko, my love, you're safe! Uh, good to see you too. I put Nezuko down and got to work on some more expansion. I started by increasing the size of my house, adding more to the right side to make it symmetrical. Next, I made Inosuke his own room. I made sure to make it partially outdoors so Inosuke could really feel at home. After that, I searched around for some sheep and made them a pen. Now I'll have plenty of food and wool. Finally, I made some decorations to make the place feel more cozy. As I was putting on the finishing touches, my crow arrived with a new mission. You got a train to catch! What? A train? On days 54 through 57, I arrived at the train station to find the fire Hashira waiting there for me. I felt awkward because I met him at my trial, but I tried talking to him anyway. Um, I'm Max, but I'm sure you already know that. Yeah, but let's start over fresh. I'm Rengoku. Here, take this as a gift. He handed me a brand new sword as well as a box lunch. Wow, thanks. Rengoku started eating his own food and apparently it was really delicious. Umai! He kept eating and I just watched him with curiosity. Umai! Is it really that impactful? Try it yourself. I ate the bento and I immediately gained a heart. Oh my! Just then, the train whistle went off and it was time to get on board. We ran onto the train and sat down together. This train ride is gonna be bussin'. Indeed, young demon slayer. The train ride is gonna be bussin'. Just then, day turned to night and the lights began to flicker. That can't be good. After a few moments, the light stopped flickering and there was a demon standing right in front of us. There he is. Let's take him down. Roger that. The demon ran deeper into the train and I sprung into battle, fighting them off with everything I had. The demon was skilled with his fists and blocked my attacks while dealing heavy blows of his own. I tried to rush him down with my water breathing techniques, but even though I had grown as a swordsman, the demon was just too powerful. He was starting to get the best of me. Ah! Just then, Rengoku walked in and I stepped to the side. Don't give up. He unleashed his full power, showing off all of his fire moves and beating the demon with ease. Whoa! Why didn't you do that from the beginning? Ren Goku just shrugged at me. I wanted to see what you could do. What was that? That's the power of a Hashira. Now let's get some rest. Our mission isn't over. We both sat down to relax, and I started getting really sleepy. I think I'm gonna close my eyes. Next thing I knew, we were both sound asleep. Little did we know, our battle on the train was just beginning. Looks like they're falling right into my trap. On days 61 through 63, I woke up inside of a dream. I was back in my house. Whoa, am I dreaming? It feels so real. Max! Mom? Everyone? You're back! This is amazing! Hi, Max. Nezzy, I've missed your voice so much. This is amazing. I never want to leave. Wait, no, something is wrong. What is it, Max? You're not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be here. You left us to die, Max. We are all dead because of you. Why did you leave us? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't leave us again, Max, please. I don't want to, but I have to. No, no Max, Max, please, don't, don't leave, leave us. us. Suddenly, I woke up and I was back on the train. All right, enough. That demon is going down. On days 64 through 67, I was still waking up from the restless sleep. Ren Goku, get up. I hit him, but he wouldn't wake up. Ren Goku. Ah, 
That was a trap. We gotta get moving. Ren Goku and I traveled from cart to cart, but we couldn't find the Dream Demon anywhere. Where is this guy? Just keep moving. He has to be around here somewhere. As we continued moving, the train began to become more corrupt. What is this stuff? Some sort of blood art. Eventually, we found Enmu, just standing there waiting for us. Ah, there you are. Did you sleep well? Get him! We sprung into action and started slicing him up, and the next thing we knew, he was defeated. Huh, that was way too easy. Yeah, that was the demon we were sent all the way here to kill? You think that you would defeat me so easily? This is merely a shell for my demon powers. Say what? Enmu escaped onto the roof and we followed. Behold, my true strength. He then began sending tentacles and arms out of the train itself. Let's kill this thing. Suddenly, tentacles started sprouting out of the roof of the train and attacking us. We started hacking and slashing at the tentacles the best we could, but there were so many of them. Enmu was the most powerful demon we had fought yet, but Ren Goku and I had some strong powers to use against him. Ren Goku's fire powers were blasting tentacles left and right, and I continuously shot back and forth, slashing at everything I could reach. Finally, we were able to overpower the train demon and defeat it. On days 68 through 70, the train crashed. We did it! We saved everyone! Suddenly, a strange demon appeared out of nowhere. Who are you? I'm Akaza, and I'm upper rank three of Muzan's most elite demons, the Kazuki. Akaza then charged at me. He was incredibly powerful, far stronger than any other demon I had faced before. He had explosive attacks and incredible speed that dealt immense damage. Ren Goku and I gave it all we had. I fought with every water breathing technique I could manage, but even so, the demon was beating me. He seemed to know that I was the weaker demon slayer and targeted me specifically. I used every chance I had to heal up, but it wasn't enough. I didn't stand a chance against him. He gravely wounded me, and I was about to die. He approached me to deal the final blow when Ren Goku ran in to stop him. Hey, stand down, Akaza. <laughs> Akaza charged at him, and he fought him off the best he could. He used the most incredible fire-breathing techniques that range from powerful flaming slashes to summoning flaming tiger heads. Rengoku tried to overwhelm the demon with his incredible fire abilities, but they were evenly matched. Akaza retaliated with his blood demon art, and the two dueled it out with intense combat. Just when it seemed like Rengoku had the upper hand, Akaza knocked him to the ground. Ah! Just as Akaza was about to finish us both off, he noticed the sun was beginning to rise and was forced to flee. Once he was gone, I got up and ran over to Rengoku. Are you okay? No, I think I'm dying, actually. Ugh, I shouldn't have brought you into this fight. I just wish I could defeat one demon on my own. I always need help from somebody else. That's what life is about, Max. We make friends so that when we're in tough situations, we have each other to rely on. He had a really good point, and before I got a chance to respond, he died right in front of me. Red Goku! No! I was so filled with rage, I chased after Akaza even though I clearly didn't have the strength left to face him. I didn't care. I was going to finish him off once and for all. I followed his scent into the forest, and then into a cave, but my strength was quickly waning. Akaza! Ugh. I made it a few steps into the cave and collapsed onto the ground. On days 71 through 73, I woke up in the cave with incredibly low health. I was on the verge of death. The others don't know where I am. Uh, I'm really gonna die here. Nezuko, I'm so sorry I failed our mission. The Hashira will probably kill you now, and it's all my fault. Suddenly, Muzan appeared in front of me. You fought harder than most demon slayers I've met. Get away from me! No, join me. Muzan tossed over some of his blood. I can't drink this! Drink it, or I'll kill your sister. You're a monster! I didn't have a choice. Nezuko's life was on the line. I drank the blood and instantly felt a sharp pain shoot through me. Ah! Oh, oh. I may have given you too much. You'll probably die. Oh, well. Muzan left, and everything went dark. On days 74 through 77, I revived as a demon. Ugh, I'm hungry. My nose picked up a scent unlike anything I had smelled before, and I pursued it as fast as I could. As I got closer, I heard the sound of people calling me. Max? Max! I turned the corner and discovered Zenitsu and Inosuke. Perfect! Dinner! Wha what the? You're a demon! We're not your dinner! Step out of it, knucklehead! 
My friends pleaded with me and I tried to fight against my urges, but I was desperate. I'll make it quick. I lunged towards them when suddenly Nezuko jumped in between us. <sighs> Let me through, traitor. Zenitsu and Inosuke ran to cover and Nezuko and I began to battle. I used my new demon powers in a barrage of attacks and she fought me off the best she could, but she didn't want to hurt me. I couldn't control myself and I kept hitting her with everything I had. So she fought back against me with all of her powers. She hit me with her explosive blast and I shot back with my snake attack. Eventually, I managed to hit Nezuko to the ground. In one more blow, she'd be finished. You're a pathetic and worthless demon. <sighs> I prepared myself to deal the finishing blow when suddenly Nezuko stood up. Her eyes changed from demonic to human. Something shifted deep inside me and I regained control of myself. I lowered my blade and spared my sister. Nezuko, I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me. <sighs> Just then, Zenitsu and Inosuke charged at me and began to swing their fists wildly. Leave my beautiful Nezuko alone, you monster! <laughs> I always knew you weren't tough. I'll beat you down in a second. Guys, guys, it's okay. I'm me again. The two of them stopped their onslaught. Well, you'll owe me for what you did to Nezuko. With things calm again, we returned to the base. Little did we know that our greatest hardships were just beginning. On days 81 through 84, I arrived back at my home and began expanding. As I started building, I noticed I was taking damage from somewhere. Ouch! Ow! What is hurting me? I quickly realized the sun was damaging my body, so I got to work and built more shade around my base to protect me from the sun's rays. Phew! I need to be more careful during the daytime. I could burn into a crisp! After building, I waited until nightfall to hunt for some food to refill my hunger. <laughs> I smelled dinner. I then spotted a herd of sheep and went in for a strike. But when I did, I managed to take them all down with a single blow. Wow, I guess being a demon also means demonic strength. Cool. I cooked and ate my food, but to my surprise, it tasted horrible. Yuck, why does this taste so bad? Ugh, I'll try more food later. The sun began to rise again, so I took the opportunity to conceal myself in a cave and harvest any precious ores I could find. As I mined, I managed to find loads of iron and some diamonds as well. With the ores I found, I made a full set of diamond and iron armor. Spending a full day underground, I was able to come out while the sun was down and head back to the base without a worry. When I arrived, I was greeted by Sonami. On days 85 through 89, I was having a conversation with Sonami. Well, seeing how you're a demon now, obviously you can't be a demon slayer. Wait, no! I am stripping you of your demon slaying duties! Aw, oh, man! You also have to die! Sonami charged at me before I could reason with him and started to attack. He was an incredibly powerful fighter, using wind breathing to send powerful attacks in my direction. Since I was now a demon, my resistance had increased, but that didn't change the fact that this Hashira was immensely powerful. If I didn't change my strategy now, I was dead. Anosuke, Zenitsu, get out of here, leave me. What? No way! We're helping you! My life isn't worth it! I'm a demon now! We don't care, dude! We're homies! In that moment, I realized these guys were my homies for life. All right, let's go! I took off into the woods and my friends followed, leaving the Demon Slayer Incorporation forever. On days 90 through 93, I was on the run with Inosuke and Zenitsu. Once we reached a safe spot, we built a hideout underground. We would need to use it for a while since the base had been compromised. Uh oh, we got a problem. As he was digging, he'd come across a nest of spider demons. Ah, uh, those are so creepy. Just because we weren't technically demon slayers anymore didn't mean we couldn't swing a sword. We sprung into action to fight the swarm. They may have been little, but there were tons and tons of them. We slashed with our swords left and right, eliminating the little pests in droves. Luckily, we were able to take them all out with relative ease. Finally, the swarm was destroyed and we set up a campfire for the night. How's everybody doing? Fine. Why wouldn't I be? Tired, but I'm just happy you're okay. Yeah. Thank you all so much for sticking with me. I really owe you my life. Eh, uh, it's nothing. Suddenly, I was filled with an intense pain. The hunger was eating me alive. <laughs> Nezuko tried her best to calm me, but it wasn't working. <laughs> In a frenzy, I lunged at Zenitsu, but Inosuke quickly knocked me out. On days 94 through 97, I had a vision. I was standing in a black void with Muzan in front of me. You, get out of my head. You can't hide from me anymore, Max. Now that you're a demon, I can find you anywhere, anytime. That doesn't matter. I'm gonna kill you myself. And when I do, humanity will be free from your evil. Nezuko and I will be human again. 
Human. <laughs> Killing the Demon King doesn't restore your humanity. If you kill me, all other demons will cease to exist, including you. What? But that's what I've been fighting for this whole time! Nobody told you that's how it worked. The Demon King dropped a map at my feet. Think hard about your next choices. You could give into your demonic hunger or kill me and die along with your sister. Muzan used a demonic slashing attack, waking me up from my horrific vision. Ah! I noticed that the map from my vision was now in my inventory and it was titled The King's Realm. I must have really been speaking to Muzan. I noticed Inosuke, Zenitsu, and Nezuko were all watching me nervously. <laughs> I'm sorry for my aggressive actions. Don't even worry about it. You'll control this sooner or later. Hmm. On days 98 through 99, I went outside to have some time for myself. After my encounter with Muzan, I didn't know what to do. As I was thinking, Nezuko approached me. Hmm? <laughs> you can tell I'm upset, huh? I explained to Nezuko the truth of what Muzan told me, and how my mission would be for nothing. I couldn't protect you. I failed as your brother. I would give anything to talk to you again, just once. Suddenly, Nezuko looked down and time seemed to stop. To my surprise, she took off her bamboo muzzle. You didn't fail, Max. I'll help you defeat Muzan and rid this world of demons no matter the cost. Are you sure? Absolutely. Nezuko put her muzzle back on and the world returned to normal. With our new resolve, we returned to the underground base to say our last goodbyes. <laughs> Nezuko, don't go! We'll defend humanity in your absence. Can you sell my new merch too? Yeah, I'll tell people to make sure you pick up their exclusive shirts at merchcraft.shop. Beautiful. With that settled, Nezuko and I headed off towards the final battle. On day 100, I arrived at the location on the map to find ourselves in a strange upside down realm. There, Muzan was already waiting. It seems like you've made your decision. We have. We're gonna take you down once and for all. You foolish demons, you'll pay for disobeying your king. With that, the two of us engaged in combat with Muzan. Like magic, Muzan sprouted tentacles, using them to his advantage in battle. He was able to slice with great speed and intensity, making it dangerous to get up close to him. We had no other choice though, so we fought through it. Nezuko used her blood demon arts to do some damage against Muzan. Although she was incredibly powerful, it didn't seem to do much. I may have been a demon too, but I used my Nichiren blade against Muzan. I started this as a demon slayer, and I plan to end it as one. We persevered, putting everything we had into this fight. At times, it didn't seem like we would make it. Remembering what was on the line helped us push ourselves even harder though. Surprisingly, after a lot of back and forth, Muzan was getting weak. No, this is impossible. With one final blow, Muzan fell to his death. We did it! We knew that our victory meant that all of the demons were being smited out of existence. In a few moments, Nezuko and I would be gone. Thank you for everything, Nezzy. Mm. I'll see you on the other side. With that, the two of us vanished, and I was teleported to my next anime world. On day one, I spawned into a city as a powerful Godzilla. Whoa! Well, I guess I know what I should do. I decided to start wrecking the place with all of my amazing Godzilla powers. What else does Godzilla do? As Godzilla, I had 50 hearts and the ability to fire a massive laser of radiation from my mouth. With my incredible powers, I melted buildings down left and right. I'm so powerful! Suddenly, something shot a missile at me. I turned around and spotted Mecha Godzilla. Your rampage ends here. Aw, oh, man, I'm just being a kaiju. The two of us had a battle of epic proportions, firing powerful attacks back and forth. The city around us crumbled as we fought with everything we had. I blasted away with my variety of attacks while Mechagodzilla fired at me with his arsenal of explosives. I tried to use my powerful roar as massive jaws to dwindle down the robot's health, but his armor protected him from my attacks. I switched to firing laser attacks in hopes of causing more damage to Mechagodzilla. However, for every attack I landed, he would hit me 10 times harder. Despite my efforts, Mechagodzilla was too powerful. He took the chance to fire a strange purple beam at me, but Instead of dying, I shrank down. I now only had 10 hearts and my scales were purple. What did you do to me? I have placed a curse on you to conceal your powers, and I will continue to spread this curse on everything that threatens humanity. 
In this state, I was powerless, so I ran away before Mechagodzilla could kill me. On day two, I managed to escape Mechagodzilla and found myself in a strange biome. What's going on here? Suddenly, I was ambushed by a horde of cursed creepers. Did these guys get affected by the curse too? I tried to use my radiation beam on the enemies, but nothing happened. The curse took away my old powers. I began to fend them off with my fists instead, but the overwhelming amount of enemies was too much for me in this state. I was going to lose. Just as I thought I was finished, I suddenly used a new cursed power, shooting cursed matter out of my mouth. Whoa, I couldn't do that before. I used my new cursed power to blast everyone around me, thinning out the horde and slowly wearing them all down. I kept using the power over and over again until there were only a few cursed creepers remaining. After a lot of fighting, I managed to take down the horde of mobs. Looks like I have cursed powers now. I wonder what else I could learn. Oh no, we didn't account for the radiation he has. The curse is only making him stronger. I turned around and realized the army was waiting with their weapons ready to fire. You're going down before you get any more powerful. On day three, I was being attacked by the army. I was still weak from my previous battle, but I couldn't give in no matter what. I fought them off the best I could, but in my small size, it was hopeless. Suddenly, I felt a surge of power within me and grew bigger. What the? The army of soldiers showered me with a hail of bullets. I used my cursed matter to light them on fire, but it wasn't doing enough damage. Suddenly, I gained the power to form a black hole. It began lifting the soldiers and tossing them around the landscape. I started dwindling down the numbers one after the other. Whoa, I guess I can learn to control the curse. I wonder just how strong I can become. I was beginning to get the one up on them when a tank appeared out of nowhere. Bring it on! They charged at me with full force. I tried using the black hole again, but couldn't muster enough strength to form it. I had to go back to the basics. I used my cursed matter to mow down the tank's health, and just like that, I destroyed it. My new power was too intense for them to keep up. I made all the humans retreat to safety. Just you wait. We'll curse all of the other kaiju. Without the radiation you possess, they'll be overtaken in a blind rage. Oh no! I have to warn the others before Mechagodzilla infects them too! On days 4 through 8, I explored the overworld for monsters that needed help. On the way, I decided to gather some materials. I punched down some trees, made a crafting bench, then crafted a wooden pickaxe. Afterwards, I mined some cobblestone and upgraded to stone tools. These will be useful, at least while I'm still small. Suddenly, I spotted King Kong picking on a herd of innocent sheep. That's not like him at all! He must be cursed! I quickly ran out and confronted the oversized ape. Hey, Kong! Remember me? It's Max! Puny lizard enrages King Kong! The monkey suddenly attacked me, pounding me with his axe to deal loads of damage. I used my cursed matter to push him back and gain some distance in between us. Luckily, he was slow, so I was able to regain some of my health. He rushed in and slammed his axe against the ground, causing me to launch up into the air. I tried to fight back, but he was too powerful. I ran away while I still had a chance. Looks like it's time for plan B. I took out my new stone shovel and got to digging a massive hole, big enough to capture King Kong inside. Once I was finished, I baited the trap of the sheep and waited for King Kong to notice. Luckily, he took the bait and charged full speed towards the sheep, causing him to fall into the pit below. Got him! I looked into the pit below and saw that he was unconscious. Sorry, buddy. I'll let you out once I find a cure. On days 9 through 12, I took my moment of peace to make a safe hideout for myself. I started by gathering more materials so that I had plenty to work with for my build. Next, I slashed down some animals for their meat and cooked them up in a furnace. I may be a kaiju, but I can appreciate a well-cooked meal. I then got to work on my base. I used the materials I had gathered to build a simple structure. I made sure it was bigger than I needed so it could accommodate my size as I continued to grow in the future. It's not much, but it's a start. Once I was done with my base, I reinforced King Kong's prison in case he tried to escape later. Just as I was about to finish, the ape woke up. King Kong angry! King Kong destroy! The curse is affecting him differently than me. It's like it's consuming him. I have to cure him before he hurts himself. On days 13 through 15, I went out to find a way to remove my curse. During my travels, I spotted another corrupted biome. Maybe a clue lies there. I roamed the area and searched for anything that could help my situation. Eventually, I came across a strange laboratory in ruins. Huh, I wonder what happened here? I investigated the area around the laboratory further to find that it was infested with cursed spiders. Oh no! Even the normal entities are being affected! The cursed spiders began nibbling at my feet, so I had no choice but to fight back. My immense size made this battle an easy one, but their spider bites did some considerable damage to me. 
I used my black hole power to keep them away from me and slowly pick them off one by one. The horde of spiders began to dwindle and I finally destroyed the last one. After the battle was finished, I searched through the rubble and discovered a mysterious book. The cursed crystal will absorb the curse from its victims if tended before their time is up. Otherwise, the victim will die from the curse's effects. That means we're on a timer! I gotta get this crystal fast! Suddenly, I began to hear loud footsteps approaching my direction. Uh-oh. Someone's coming! The footsteps continued until Mechagodzilla appeared. I quickly ran from the area, knowing I wasn't ready to fight him. On days 16 through 19, I was being chased by Mechagodzilla. He fired attacks at me as I ran for my life. As I tried to escape, I spotted the ocean and decided to jump in to throw the robot off of my tail. To my surprise, I was able to breathe underwater. I guess as Godzilla, I have water breathing too. I waited in hiding as Mechagodzilla walked by. You cannot hide forever. I'll destroy all of you worthless creatures. The mech left, but I didn't know where he went, so I decided to explore the ocean. Ooh, that was close. I took the chance to look around and spotted a strange entrance under the water. What's that? I went ahead and swam through the gap to discover an underwater temple. Whoa, what sort of secrets do you hold? I explored the different nooks and crannies of the temple until finally arriving inside of a treasure room. At its center was a mysterious artifact. That must be the cursed crystal! I grabbed it for safekeeping when suddenly a cursed ender guardian attacked me. He was super tough and shot at me with his cursed bubble beam. It was hard to evade his attacks in the water, so I had to be careful. I fought back with my cursed matter and started to wear him down from afar. Whenever I got the chance, I came with my bite attack and took chunks out of his health bit by bit. I even tried using my black hole power in the water, creating a crazy swirling whirlpool. With one final blow, I put the cursed fish in his place. Perfect! I'll use this crystal to get rid of my curse too. I tried to use the artifact, but nothing happened. Wait a second. I think they did mention that my radiation protected me. Maybe that's why I can control the curse. This artifact might not work on me, but will definitely help the other kaijus. On days 20 through 23, I returned to my base and discovered that King Kong was missing. Oh no, he escaped. I searched around and quickly found him wreaking havoc on a nearby city. <laughs> Kong, you need to stop. The curse is taking control of you! King Kong kill Lizard Tempter! Stop! I wanna help! Kong refused to listen to my pleas and charged at me and began to attack. I tried to use the power of the cursed crystal, but I wasn't able to while King Kong was enraged. I had to get a hold of him first. The two of us fought with everything we had. This time, King Kong was stronger than before as the curse had progressed even further. He attacked me with his powerful axe, dealing loads of damage to me and the surrounding area. I did my best to evade him and shot at him with my curse matter attack. Whenever he got too close, I would bite down onto him with my massive jaws. But even with my strength, he was still overpowering me. Come on, I need to get stronger. Suddenly, I managed to gain even more control over the curse and grew larger. With my new size, I now had 20 hearts and acquired the ability of Daybreak to help me fight. I began to blast down King Kong with my new curse power, sending slow and powerful projectiles in his direction. Thanks to my new curse power, I took King Kong down. Since Kong was weakened, it gave me the opportunity to use the artifact on him. When activated, he became no longer enraged and returned to normal. Right. that was rough. Sorry for attacking you. I'm not sure what came over me. It's all right. The curse must have been affecting your body differently. Since you're back to normal, would you want to form a team? I need to find more kaiju to make sure this curse doesn't hurt anyone else. I'm in. On days 24 through 27, I returned home and started expanding my base. I began making a room for King Kong, making sure to account for his large size. What do you think? <laughs> kind of reminds me of the cage you kept me in. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. After that, I headed underground to go mining. While I was down there, I had an idea. I began tearing through the rock with my razor sharp teeth. I was able to quickly clear a path and in the process found iron. Now that's a lot more efficient than a pickaxe. After mining, I went back to my base, making a sheet pan for an unlimited supply of food. With that, my expansion was complete. After expanding the base, Kong and I chatted about the effects of the curse and how we should stop it. The curse. It changed me, man. I lost all control of myself. It could feel my body giving out on me. That's why it's so important I find the other kaiju. I have to free them from it before someone gets killed. Well, I'd say your best bet is checking out Skull Island. There you can find Mothra. She might be of some help. Kong then tossed me a map. Thanks, man. I'll check it out. On days 28 through 30, I made my way towards Skull Island. 
On the way, I found King Ghidorah burning down a forest. Ugh, why did it have to be those guys? Whatever, I need to warn Kevin about the curse. I walked over to the three and tried to greet them to the best of my abilities. Hi, Kevin! Ichi, Ni. Nee. Ichi and Ni nee didn't seem to be all that amused to see me, but at least Kevin was. Oh, Kevin. Hey, Godzilla! How are you? Not too great, actually. <laughs> I say, where's your mommy, baby Simba? <laughs> oh, good one, me. Yeah, yeah, very funny. Actually, that's why I'm here. I came to warn you guys that Mechagodzilla is spreading a curse to all kaiju, which means you three as well. <gasps> oh, no! No tiny curse is going to affect us. Maybe it would for a weakling like you. I swear, Kevin is the only good head on your shoulders. Oh, thank you! Angered by the two buffoons, I stormed off to find more kaijus who were affected by the curse. I'll show them who's boss. I just need to become strong again. Bye, Nessie! On days 31 through 34, I had finally arrived at Skull Island. I immediately spotted a small group of skeleton turtles roaming around on the beach. Oh, creepy, but somehow cute. A frightened villager had noticed my arrival and began to flee into the jungle. Run! It's Godzilla! I followed behind them to see if I could find any leads on what Kong had me searching for. Suddenly, I heard a voice off in the distance. It was Mecha Godzilla talking to someone. I will destroy all of the kaijus, and you're next on the list. Why are, Why are you, you doing, doing this? You and all the others pose too much of a threat and must be deleted from this world. Getting a better view of the conversation, I realized he was talking to Mothra. I need to get in there and help her. I ran in between them and began attacking Mechagodzilla. Using my cursed matter to push him back, we prepared for battle. Let's take him on, together. Okay. The two of us combined our strength and began to take on Mechagodzilla in battle. The giant robot was a force to be reckoned with. He had powerful missiles that dug into Mothra and I for massive damage. The two of us fought with everything we had, but his armor seemed impenetrable. Even so, we kept fighting. Gradually, the giant mecha lizard seemed to be weakening in strength. With Mothra fighting alongside me, we are beginning to pull ahead. Don't let up! We almost got him! I could tell we were close to beating him, but before we could stop him, he deployed the curse onto Mothra. <sighs> I won't let you interfere with my plans any further. No! <laughs> Good luck dealing with this new and improved version of the curse. Mecha Godzilla fled from the area, leaving me to deal with her. Uh oh. I turned back to see her facing away from me and making odd noises. Hey, you okay there, bud? I tried my best to get her attention, but before I could walk over to her, she transformed into an even larger kaiju. She turned around and lunged straight at me. On days 35 through 38, I was locked in battle with Mothra. She had a crazy new curse power that was able to fire powerful projectiles. I didn't want to hurt my friend, but I couldn't let her overpower me either. I fought back with my cursed matter attack as well as my daybreaker attack. Mothra tried to fly in close to deal some damage, but I would counterattack with my powerful jaws. Every chance I had, I tried to snap her out of her blind rage. Mothra, listen to me! You can overcome the curse! Just breathe! Eventually, I was able to talk her down and she regained control. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what came over me. I'm just happy you're with me now. Seems like you're able to resist the curse like me because you're radioactive. Let me try to remove it with my crystal. I tried using my crystal on her, but nothing happened. Huh, I guess the radiation prevents me from removing your curse too. Oh, that's okay. I'll just, I'll just... Suddenly, she started losing control again. Eventually, I was able to talk her back down, and we continued talking. Seems like you don't have full control over the curse. I'm sorry, I'm just not as strong as you. Don't worry, I'll take care of you when you lose control. Oh, thank you so much. So, what brings you to Skull Island? I'm looking for Kaiju to help free them from the curse, and Kong sent me here to find help. I'm guessing he meant you? I'd be happy to. Mothra started leading me somewhere when we came across some more skeleton turtles. Uh, excuse me? You guys aren't cursed turtles, are you? No, we're just like this. Oh, okay. Carry on. Hmm, nice guy. On days 39 through 42, I explored Skull Island with Mothra. She was surprisingly knowledgeable about the area. First, she took me to a spot with a giant skull. 
This is the spot where Kong and I usually hang out. Spooky, but oddly cozy. Mothra went inside one of the eye sockets, then turned around to face me. Surprise! She tossed over some homemade cookies. Whoa, thanks. The two of us munched on the snacks and continued with our tour. Next, we arrived at a human-run radio tower. These guys are always on the lookout for Kaiju. How do they do that? They have a computer that's able to locate them. Kaiju locating gear could be useful for our cause. I walked over to the tower in hopes of getting some use out of their tech, but I was stopped by a group of soldiers. Let me through! No way! We're gonna kill all of you, Kaiju! Before I could respond, the army began to fire at me full force. I had no choice but to fight back. I fired at the army with my powerful cursed abilities. Each hit dwindled them down, but their sheer numbers were still enough to make the fight difficult. Luckily, Mothra flew in to help me take on the army, using her own cursed abilities to melt through their numbers. After a long battle, I managed to blow away all of the soldiers, leaving only one remaining. I surrender! Then tell me where the next kaiju is. The soldier dropped a map titled Kamakuras and ran away as fast as he could. <sighs> I didn't want to hurt them, but I didn't have a choice. Uh, maybe one day the humans will come to their senses. With our new lead, Mothra and I headed back to the base to prepare for the journey ahead. On days 43 through 45, I returned home with Mothra to find what looked like a giant rose flower fighting King Kong. I quickly rushed in and started fighting the thing. With our powers combined, we were able to take the thing down, but then it just grew back bigger. Mothra jumped into the fight and started using her powers on it too. The two of us shot down at the massive flower with our ranged attacks, while King Kong went in close with his axe to deal massive amounts of damage. But even with the brute strength of three kaiju, the horrifying monster was able to hang on. It had vicious attacks that dealt great amounts of damage. They would even occasionally set my friends on fire. But despite everything, we continued to push through, no matter how difficult the battle would become. Gradually, we tore through the flowers and men's armor and dealt more and more damage to it. Finally, with all of our powers combined, we were able to take the thing down once and for all. What the heck was that thing? Suddenly, I started absorbing the thing's cursed energy, and I could feel myself growing stronger. I gained 10 hearts and grew a little bit bigger. Whoa, sweet! Then I noticed that even though Mothra was cursed, she didn't get anything from it. Hey, that's not fair. Oh, it's, it's okay. okay. Maybe next time. Man, you're really getting the short end of the stick here, huh? I'm just happy I'm not totally insane. Yeah, good point. I turned to Kong, who was staring where the mutated rose used to be. Even the plants are getting mutated now? What's next? I know, this is getting way out of hand. We have to stop Mecha Godzilla. Yeah, as quickly as possible. What are we gonna do? I have a plan. We just need to keep finding cursed kaiju and curing them, and then recruit them to our team. Eventually, we'll be powerful enough to take him down. Sounds good to me. Where do we start? I have a map that will lead me to Kamakuras, the giant praying mantis. On days 46 through 49, I was following the map when I suddenly spotted a group of strange looking skeletons. What's that? I took a closer look and realized they were cursed humans. There, a normal human was running for their life. Help! Someone help me! Don't worry, I'll help. I ran in to protect the person in trouble and the horde of cursed humans turned to attack me. The army showered me in arrows. Thanks to their cursed power, they were surprisingly scrappy, but I shot down the skeletons with my daybreaker and cursed matter to retaliate. Once they were weakened enough by my ranged attacks, I leaned in close with my biting attack to rack up some extra damage. Finally, I used my black hole to lift the weakened skeletons into the air and finish them off once they hit the ground. I'm sorry! I killed the remainder of the skeletons, leaving only me and the normal human. I'm sorry about your friends. What's going on here? Mechagodzilla deemed humanity a threat to themselves. Now he's going on a rampage and crushing everyone in sight. Mechagodzilla has gone rogue? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for the pain my people have caused you. Now our own creation is turning on us. Suddenly the human began to act strange. Oh no, the curse. It's too late for me! The human transformed into a cursed skeleton before my very eyes. I tried to use the crystal, but it wouldn't work. I'm sorry, buddy. I couldn't let the curse continue to spread, so I took the skeleton down. This has gone too far. I had to take down Mega Godzilla before he curses the entire world. On days 50 through 52, I continued following the map to find the next kaiju. Looks like I'm almost there. I had arrived at the location marked on the map to see that the area had already been corrupted by the curse. Oh no! I better warn Kamakura's quick! Moving forward, I had finally found him looking confused in a clearing. Ah, uh, my home. It's transforming into something strange. That's what I came to warn you about! Suddenly, the ground started shaking and Mechagodzilla appeared. Ah, 
Another life form remains uncursed. Before I could react, he cursed Kamakuras and left me to deal with the aftermath. I looked towards the praying mantis nervously. Kamakuras? The corrupted bug charged at me, and I was forced to fight him off. Due to the curse, Kamakuras was now able to perform a powerful roaring attack. He shot shockwaves at me that tore through my scales and dealt massive damage. I continued to fight through it regardless, using my biting attack at the mantis whenever I got the chance. Unfortunately, his roar was so strong that it would send me flying. I switched to ranged attacks instead and shot him down with my cursed matter and daybreaker. I will destroy you, you overgrown crocodile. I'm trying to help. The longer the battle raged on, the closer I was brought to the brink of death. I wasn't sure how much longer I could hang on. Does my journey end here? Just as I thought I was about to lose, I felt a strange feeling inside of me. I gained more control of my cursed powers, causing me to grow in size, gain 10 hearts, and a new roar ability. Whoa! Let's see what this does. I unleashed my powers full force onto Kamakuras. I now was able to send a powerful roaring attack back in his direction. The two of us battled neck and neck, trying to outroar the other one. Luckily for me, my new control over the curse gave me the boost I needed. After a long battle, I managed to finally weaken the Praying Mantis enough to use my curse crystal. The curse crystal absorbed all of his curse energy, causing him to return to normal. Ugh, my head. What happened? Mecha Godzilla cursed you. He's trying to curse the entire world. My home was destroyed because of him. Let me join your cause. The more the merrier. I handed him a map to the base, but Kamakura's had something else to say. Before I go, I have something to tell you. When I was cursed, I had a vision. I saw massive amounts of water and a gigantic aquatic beast. Awaiting on the other side was Mecha Godzilla, destroying everything around him. I believe that on the other side of the ocean, Mecha Godzilla is scheming something big. Then there's no time to waste! On days 57 through 59, I dove into the ocean and started my long swim towards Kamakuras' lead. The journey was long, and after a lot of traveling, I was beginning to get tired. Just then, I spotted an island in the distance. Whew, maybe I can stop and rest there for a bit. I arrived onto the shore and realized the place was crawling with weird-looking monsters. What is this place? Hi, I'm little Godzilla. Welcome to the island of Misfit Kaiju. Are you a bootleg purple Godzilla? <laughs> Excuse you? I'm cursed. Don't see your differences as a curse. See them as a gift. Come with me. I followed the little Godzilla around the island for the tour he prepared. Over here is King Gadurp. Hi, you Godzilla. How are you doing today, buddy? You're looking great, pal. Wow, you're much nicer than my King Ghidorah. A little stiffer, though. We continued on with our tour, taking me to a strange green kaiju. This is Frank. What's wrong with him? Nothing, he's just like that. Little Godzilla finally took me to our last stop where two strange kaiju were yelling at each other. I hate you! Beep boop beep, you smell! What's going on? Oh, that's just Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla. They're always fighting. Wow, that's a coincidence. Anyways, this was great and all, but I think there was a big misunderstanding. I gotta go. You wanna leave? Nobody leaves this island. I looked around and all of the kaiju were staring at me. Join us! Join us! Join us! Without a moment to waste, I jumped into the water and swam away. On days 60 through 63, I was continuing my travels towards Mechagodzilla when suddenly I heard someone calling for help. Help! Help! What's that? I swam towards the source to find that a villager's boat was being attacked by the whale god. The whale god must be cursed! I have to help him! I swam in as fast as I could to intervene. We were fighting in the whale god's domain, but luckily I was an amazing swimmer too. The whale god was able to perform a sonic boom attack under the water. He shot massive sonic waves at me, which dealt massive damage. But I wasn't about to give up that easily. I used my new roar attack to deal tons of damage and my curse matter to hit him from afar. Whenever he got too close, I bit him with my powerful jaws. After a difficult fight, I managed to weaken the whale god enough to use my cursed crystal. Unfortunately, nothing seemed to happen. What are you doing with that thing? Aren't you cursed? No, that boat just doesn't belong here in my ocean. Wow, rude. I shot one of my cursed attacks at him to scare him off, leaving me and the villager alone. Thank you for all of your help. Take this. The villager gave me a ton of steak. I'm going to tell all the other villagers how cool you are. 
Oh shucks, thanks. With the conflict resolved, I continued on my way. On days 64 through 67, I arrived on the other side of the ocean to find a massive factory. What's going on here? I investigated the area to find several rows of mini Mechagodzillas being built. This is insane! He's making his own army? I continued to explore around the factory and found Mechagodzilla in the distance. I hunkered down in a nice hiding spot to listen in on any vital details. Soon enough, my army will grow large enough to spread the curse across the entire world. Is he monologuing to himself? Nobody will be able to survive. Not even that pesky Godzilla. Let phase three commence. What's phase three? Suddenly, he transformed into an upgraded Mecha Godzilla. What the? With this new form, no one can stop me. <laughs> this is not good. I gotta tell the others. Just as I was about to leave, Mecha Godzilla spotted me. Eliminate! The massive robot charged me with a brand new ability. Not only could he fire powerful lasers and missiles like before, but he could also now strike me with lightning. I did my best to evade him, since every hit would deal massive damage to me. Even though he was powerful, I knew this was my time to show Mecha Godzilla just how strong I had become too. I fired my cursed matter attack at him as well as my daybreaker to try and pierce through his new armor. I knew if I got too close, he would kill me quickly, so I kept the battle at a distance. Despite how much I had grown, I was still no match for the newly upgraded Mecha Godzilla. I fled with my tail between my legs before he could take my life. On days 68 through 70, I returned home feeling defeated. What's wrong? Everything. Mechagodzilla is only getting stronger and stronger and it feels like I can't keep up. At this rate, he's gonna curse the entire world. You're getting stronger too and you have something he doesn't. What's that? Us. You know what? You're right. Thanks, Kong. I was feeling motivated after King Kong's words, so I decided to give our little base a facelift. I started by finally making Kamakuras a proper room to call his own. This looks wonderful. Thank you. Just then, the villager I had saved from the boat came up to me. Oh, hello again. How can I help you? My friends and family have nowhere to go. The cursed biome is spreading too quickly. Say no more. I got to work on a safe haven for the villagers to stay in, making sure they had everything they needed to be safe. You promise you won't step on us? <laughs> Not on purpose. <laughs> Thank you for everything. Actually, I think I heard of another kaiju just north of here. Maybe they can help you on your journey. I do need to get stronger. I'll go pay them a visit. On days 71 through 74, I traveled towards the kaiju I was informed of to find a strange area covered in webs. I wonder what lives here. I tried to stop my way through the webs, assuming that my size would make them ineffective on me. To my surprise, the webs were strong enough to stop me in my tracks. What the? How could these webs stop me? Just then, a giant spider emerged. It was none other than the Kaiju Kumanga. Well, well, well. Looks like I'm having lizard for dinner. No, wait. I think you're the kaiju I was looking for. I explained to Kumanga my quest to stop Mechagodzilla before he could curse the world and how I needed their help. Hmm, well, I guess the curse has been a real pain in my side. I'll help you, but for a price. What do I have to do? I need you to defeat Cursed King Ghidorah. What? They managed to get cursed? That pesky kaiju has been burning down my forests. Now that they're cursed, it's even worse. Either remove the curse or kill them. Oh no. On days 75 through 77, I arrived at the spot where Kamanga told me to go to find Cursed King Ghidorah destroying everything around them. Oh no! The curse really got to them! I have to save them! For Kevin! I ran in and grabbed their attention. Hey you, your rampage ends now. Without hesitation, the three-headed kaiju attacked me. I quickly began firing my cursed matter to push them away, but it wasn't enough to phase them. They began launching devastating fireballs in my direction, causing major destruction to the surrounding area. Using my roar ability, I was able to lightly damage them. They lit the floor blades, making it hard to maneuver around their fury of attacks. I took one wrong step and immediately caught on fire. I could feel my health dwindling by the second. I fought with all of my might, but they were nearly as powerful as Mechagodzilla himself. Even so, I wasn't about to give up. Come on, curse! I need more power! Suddenly, I grew in size and gained 10 hearts as well as a new cursed ability. I began attacking and realized I was shooting down beams of lightning from the clouds. King Ghidorah tried to evade my attacks, but the lightning strikes were just too fast for him. He continued to blast fireballs in my direction, occasionally hitting me, but he was clearly no match for my new strength. 
After a fierce battle, I struck him with one final strike and managed to win. I took out my cursed crystal and freed King Ghidorah from his curse. What the? Max, are you okay? I'm great now that you've snapped out of it. Ugh, how embarrassing. Of all the people, why did we have to get saved by you? Thanks, Nasty! Also, if you don't mind not burning down the forest anymore, that'd be great. Ugh, fine. Whatever. Okay! With that, I headed back to report to Kumanga. Time to get even stronger! On days 78 through 81, I returned to Kumanga and reported my successful mission. That's great news! Now it's time that I held up my end of our agreement. The kaiju handed me a strange object. What's this? This is an ancient artifact that holds a lot of potential. The only problem is nobody has been able to activate its power. I suspect that you could fuel it with your cursed energy. Would this really be enough to take down Mechagodzilla? I'm sure of it. But you need to unlock its power first. Take this map. It will lead you to another kaiju. They are evil and will be the perfect test subject. Thank you so much for your help. Without a moment to waste, I set off in the direction of the map. On the way, I spotted a massive Godzilla statue. I'm gonna be that big soon enough. Suddenly, some random members of a Godzilla fan club ran up to me. Oh my god, are you really THE Godzilla? The one and only. You're so cool! <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh! Please, take this! The fans handed me tons of food as a gift. This is great! Thank you! I followed the map to discover a kaiju eating a bunch of helpless villagers. It was Komodo Drax, and he was fully rabid. This guy is too far gone! He's gotta go down! I rushed into battle to fight the rabid kaiju and save the humans. Komodo tracks had massive jaws that were able to bite through my powerful scales. I had to be careful not to get in too close, otherwise he would be able to deal loads of damage. To keep him at bay, I shot him down with my lightning beam as well as my powerful roars. When he got too close, I would bite him back and regain distance to shoot him down with my cursed matter and daybreaker. Even though I was fighting smart, Komodo tracks was too powerful. I thought I was about to lose, when suddenly the artifact I had received activated spontaneously. The power is surging through me! The curse entity gave me an extra 10 hearts and the ability to shoot curse lasers. <laughs> nice! Let's finish this! With my new power, I took down the monster with ease. I looked to the ground to see a little villager cheering me on. Thank you, little one! It's nothing, really! Mr. Godzilla, sir? Are you gonna destroy all the monsters? Well, we're not all monsters. Most of us want to live in peace like you guys. Then why did that one that you just killed want to eat us? He just got a little too sick is all. I wanted to help him, but I couldn't save him in time. I believe in you, Mr. Godzilla. Thanks, kid. I then left the area feeling a lot more confident for when I had to face Mechagodzilla. On days 86 through 89, I arrived at the base to find Mothra in a really excited mood. Hey, what's all the hubbub? I had a baby! A baby? Just then, a giant larva baby revealed itself. Holy cow! It's huge! Isn't she cute? Uh, I guess. I said, isn't she cute? Uh, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> She's so adorable and squishy looking. That's right. Oh, I, I would just, just die if anything happened, happened to her. Suddenly, the baby started crying. Oh, no. What's wrong with it? Oh, she's, she's hungry. hungry. Would, Would you be a dog and fetch me some supplies? I have a handful here, so I need you to do it. Okay. What do you need? Mothra then dropped me a long list of stuff that she needed for her new baby. You need all of this? <laughs> Yeah. Okay! I quickly rushed out to look for the supplies she needed. I traveled far and wide to grab all of the necessary supplies for Mothra's baby. The list was very extensive, but after a lot of hunting, I managed to gather everything that was needed. Once the shopping list was completed, I returned to Mothra and her baby at the base. You got the things I asked for? Sure did. I dropped everything she requested and the baby got really excited. <laughs> Daddy? Huh? Oh no. Sorry, gotta go! I left Mothra to tend to her child and focused on finding Mechagodzilla. On days 90 through 92, I began my recon of Mechagodzilla and his factory. 
When I arrived, I discovered his goons working on a strange cursed device. What's that? Just then, a human soldier walked up to me. That's Mechagodzilla's cursed device. I've been scouting out here too to learn more about it. What does it do? It's a device capable of spreading the curse over a wide radius. If it's completed, Mechagodzilla will curse the entire world. We have to stop him. That's the spirit, soldier. Take this. The soldier handed me a new set of mecha armor. Whoa, thank you. Now, onward. No, wait. Before he could be stopped, he was instantly killed by one of the mecha goons. Yikes. I better come back with a plan first. Otherwise, I'll be toast. On days 93 through 95, I discovered an abandoned tank on the way back to my base. Huh, this gives me an idea. I stepped onto the tank and began to skate around for fun. I was surprisingly good at tank skating. I went up and down hills and even did multiple 360s. Who said a kaiju couldn't have a bit of fun? Just then, a horde of cursed creepers attacked me. I used my new tank skate to speed around my enemies and fought off the horde of cursed creepers. My main attack was my lightning, which I used in quick succession to light multiple of the cursed creepers on fire. Whenever I felt they were getting too close, I skated to a new spot. With my speed, there was no way they could catch me. I continued the barrage of lightning, igniting creeper after creeper. Thanks to my new tank, I managed to defeat every last one of the mobs. That was surprisingly fun. I skated back to the base on my new tank and found King Kong waiting for me. Nice skates, my dude. Thanks. Actually, I have something I need to tell you guys. I got Kong up to speed on the cursed device and how I needed to find a way to stop it. The only way to stop a device like that is to absorb its power. Well, my cursed crystal should do just the trick. Thanks, Kong. I was about to head off towards Mechagodzilla when suddenly Mothra flew up to me in a frenzy. Uh, someone get out of my baby! Oh no! We gotta act fast! On days 96 through 97, I headed in the direction that Mothra told me to and got a whiff of a strange smell. Is that soup? I pushed on a bit further and discovered a giant cursed human cooking up Mothra's baby in a pot. Without a moment to waste, I rushed in. Stop right there! Yeah, he's too far gone. It's fighting time. The cursed human had a powerful blade which he charged me with everything he had. I tried to use my jaws to bite him down up close, but I was taking too much damage. To avoid his attacks, I made some distance between us and began to fire at him with all the different powers I had gained over my journey. Unfortunately for me, his cursed blade also shot strange green projectiles. I had to evade them and shoot at him with everything I had. I used my lightning beam, daybreaker, cursed matter, and even my new cursed lasers. All of my firepower dug into the monster, dealing tons of damage. Even so, the cursed human continued his onslaught. The battle was tough. The curse had mutated him beyond the power of any human I had faced before. He had the strength of a kaiju. For Mothra! Suddenly, I gained even more control of my cursed power. I grew in size, gained 10 hearts, and the ability to shoot wither skulls. To close the gap, I began to fire away with my new power. They did just the trick, and the cursed human began to weaken more and more. Despite my struggles, I managed to overpower the cursed entity. After the fight was over, I rushed to the pot and freed the baby. Daddy! I'm not your dad. I returned to the base and reunited Mothra with her child. Oh, thank, thank you so much. No problem. On day 98, I decided to do some last minute changes to the base before facing Mechagodzilla. I started by changing some of the blocks around to better reflect my cursed powers. Next, I made a small play area for Mothra's baby. I even made sure to add a chest full of colorful wool so he could build some things for fun. Once I was done, the baby started playing right away. Daddy, look! I made a heart for you. I'm not your dad, but that's adorable. Lastly, I made a little garden for the villager sanctuary so they had plenty of food to eat. Finally, my base was complete. Not too shabby. With that, I gathered everyone around to say some parting words. I'm going to face Mechagodzilla and end this before his curse infects the world. Can we come too? No. Only I have enough radiation to protect me from the curse's effects. It's best you guys stay put where it's safe. We believe in you, Max. I set off for the final battle towards Mechagodzilla's lair. On day 99, I arrived at Mechagodzilla's factory and discovered the device was missing. What the? Am I too late? Intruder! I turned around and found that an army of mecha goons were waiting for me. You're going down, Tinker Toys! They began to rush me all at once. 
I had grown so powerful that I was able to use my roar and Wither Skull simultaneously. I lit the mechs ablaze, taking them down one by one. They continued to rush me, but the battle was moving in my favor. I struck them with my lightning, causing the remaining few to short circuit and become nothing but heaps of scrap metal. Despite their numbers, I managed to defeat the entire army of mecha goons. I've really gotten stronger, huh? Upon their death, one of them dropped a note. Mecha Godzilla has already arrived in the city. Soon he will unleash the cursed device's power and curse everything on this planet. Then there's no time to waste. On day 100, I arrived in the city to find Mecha Godzilla toying with his device. Stop right there, you oversized battery! Ah, you've been a real pain in my side. Once I start my device, there will be no stopping me from cursing everyone. Not if I have something to say about it. The two of us charge into battle. I knew that this would be my most difficult battle yet, so I used everything I had obtained up to this point to face Mechagodzilla head on. I fired at him with my vast array of weapons while he fired back at me with his own. It was Kaiju versus Kaiju, and only one was gonna reign supreme. Whenever I was able to get close, I sank my teeth into the mech and tore away at his armor. But he would retaliate with his powerful weapons to blast me away. We were truly neck and neck, and it was hard to see who would prevail. Despite the numerous kaiju I had fought, he was stronger than anyone I had faced up to this point. I knew my best bet was to use my cursed crystal as soon as I could. Take this! I took out my crystal, but Mechagodzilla knew what I was scheming. He knocked it out of my hand, causing it to shatter. No! You fool! Now nothing will stop my machine! He powered on the device, causing a vortex to appear. No! I have to save everyone! With no other options, I jumped into the vortex to stop it from spreading the curse. Ah! To my surprise, instead of dying, I absorbed its energy. I grew bigger than ever before and gained a ton of strength and hearts. I was now the ultimate cursed Godzilla. Roar! I used my new power to continue the battle with Mechagodzilla until finally taking him down once and for all. I saved the city, but thanks to all the power I absorbed, my mind started to drift away, and I was taken to a brand new universe. On day one, I entered the lobby of Ban Ban's kindergarten with my little sister. We're finally at your new kindergarten. Suddenly, the lights in the room began to flicker. Once they stopped, Maggie was gone. What happened? Before I could realize what was happening, I turned around and saw a horrific purple bird. <coughs> what is that? The purple bird began to chase me. I had no weapons to defend myself, so I was forced to run for my life. I ran through the halls of the kindergarten with a purple monster close behind me. Out of nowhere, I was met with platforms over a gaping pit. Why is this in a kindergarten? I platformed over the pit, being careful not to fall, but the bird wasn't giving up. They managed to land a powerful peck attack on me, and I plummeted into the darkness below. Ah! On day two, I woke up at the bottom of the pit, where a horrifying monster was looming over me. I see you survived, O Pillar Bird. You should have died peacefully when you had the chance. What did you do with my little sister? Your sister is being prepared for our experiment. On day 100, she will be ready. I won't let you! In a fit of rage, I ran towards the creature, but they were able to teleport away before I reached them. I have to go deeper in the facility and save Maggie before they hurt her! I began to search for a way to escape the pit, when I found a letter on the ground titled Jumbo Josh. Jumbo Josh? Who's that? Just then, I heard heavy footsteps behind me. I walked back through the door and a giant green monster emerged. Me! Before I had time to respond, the entity attacked me. I ran through a narrow doorway, but Jumbo Josh had the power to shrink to my size. He continued to chase me. Even if I wanted to fight back, I didn't have any weapons. I was forced to run away as fast as I could. This is the worst day ever! After some running, I found an elevator room. I quickly ran inside and shut the iron door behind me. I don't think that door is gonna hold it back very long. Just then, the worst happened. Jumbo Josh grew giant behind me. He smashed his hands into the elevator, causing me to plummet into the depths. On day three, I woke up in a daze. What happened? I looked around and realized Jumbo Josh wasn't around. This was my chance to get somewhere safe. I walked into another room, finding a strange red figure behind a glass cage. Another survivor? Thank goodness. I'm trapped here and I need your help. Aren't you another one of those monsters? No, I'm friendly. My name is Ban Ban. I'll tell you everything if you get the key card and let me out of here. 
Oh, okay. I'll be back as soon as I can. I went around exploring the facility, finding tons of food along the way. Thank goodness, apples and bread. I continued walking around, eventually finding the key card lying on a high surface. There's no way I'm reaching that. I searched around the room, hoping to find something to help me reach the ledge. It wasn't long before I found a drone. Perfect. I quickly powered it up and used it to grab the key card. This little device will definitely come in handy. With the key card in hand, I headed back and let Ban Ban out of their cage. Ha <laughs> ha you fool! Your pancreas is mine! I ran for my life as Ban Ban pursued me. What kind of kindergarten is this? I continued to run. If I stopped, I would be devoured by the red monster. After sprinting for what felt like hours, I spotted a mysterious golden door. I quickly ran inside, finding myself in a giant empty room. Whoa, this place is crazy. No matter how hard he tried, Ban Ban couldn't seem to get in. Looks like I'm safe here. Since it seemed like I would be here for a while, I decided to start fortifying this empty room and build a base where I could be safe. I didn't have to look far for building materials since there was a chest inside the room that had plenty of colorful blocks. Using them, I constructed a base to call home. My base was themed after the rest of the kindergarten so that if someone were to find it, it would blend in. I started by building a playhouse to rest in, complete with a sandbox and swing set to fit the theme. It may look cute, but this place will definitely help me survive. Once I was done building, a hatch on the ceiling opened and dropped a weapon and a letter. To whoever is reading this, Ban Ban's kindergarten is not what it seems. It's full of horrifying monsters. Take your children and escape while you can. What have I brought Maggie into? I'm coming for you, sis! I exited out the golden door. Luckily, Ban Ban was nowhere to be seen. Thank goodness he's gone. I looked around, spotting a strange trail of feathers on the floor. Against my best judgment, I decided to follow it. On days 8 through 10, I continued following the feathers and walked in a playground area. If I didn't already know what I know, this would be a cute little playground. I started exploring all around the place. While I was at it, I managed to find some pieces of iron. Suddenly, a little colorful chick ran by. Ah, what are you? I got closer to the baby and realized it was Opala's chick. Oh, you're just a kid, like Maggie. <sighs> I hope she's okay. Suddenly, it started jumping on a high platform, which was super dangerous. I don't think you should be doing that. They jumped down and I caught them right before they could hurt themselves. The last thing I needed was Opila thinking I hurt her baby. I turned around, finding Opila standing right in front of me. Without warning, she began to attack me. I don't want your baby. I left the baby with her mother and booked it away from the giant terrifying bird. On days 11 through 14, I ran through even more confusing hallways to escape Opula. You know what? I'm tired of running. How about you lay off? I stood my ground, ready to fight the oversized pink ostrich. She pecked at me like I was food. I was trying to dodge left and right to hit her with my toy sword. She was so powerful, I couldn't keep up even to strike her. Hit by hit, she dwindled down my health bar until only half a heart remained. Despite my new weapon, I couldn't weaken her enough and I was starting to lose. Hey, over here. Just then, I spotted another monster down the hall. She looked just like Ban Ban, but was all white and had a pink bow. Hurry, I'll help you. I don't know if I can trust her, but I don't really have a choice right now. I bolted for the door she was holding open, desperate to escape Opala. When I ran in, I saw that the room was the classroom. But the only people sitting at the desks were inanimate objects? My name is Bambolina. I'm your new teacher. <sighs> I knew this was going to be another trick. Quiet and sit down. Class is in session. Okay, all right. I quickly sat in one of the empty chairs. I didn't want to make her angrier. All right, class. We're going to learn how to annihilate others, starting with a pop quiz. Anyone who answers wrong will be punished. Mm -hmm. This is bad news. On days 15 through 17, I sat in Bambolina's classroom, taking her deadly quiz. All right, class, what's two plus two? How about you, new kid? Uh, four? That's right. Huh, maybe this won't be so bad. Next, what is 686-412-3612 plus 9819399912? What? There was no way I was going to get this right. I had to think fast and create some kind of distraction. I sneakily took out the remote for the drone and started to fly it around outside the classroom. What was that? Stay in your seat. I'll be right back. Bambolina walked outside the classroom, and I wasted no time trying to escape out the back door. There were plushies and objects piled up in front of it. I had to push them out of the way one by one. 
out of the way! Coming through! As I got the last plushie out of the way, I heard Bambolina right behind me. You think you can just skip class during a test? You have to be punished! Ah! I took off running through the door. On days 18 through 21, I ran through a series of strange hallways to escape Bambolina. Bambolina was right behind me. I couldn't stop for a second, and these hallways were so long, there was nowhere to hide. What kind of place is this? I tried to use some of the blocks from earlier to slow her down, but she crashed right through them. Come back here! I kept running, but I passed right by a big glass wall with Jumbo Josh watching through the other side. Not you again! He smashed his giant arm through the glass to try and grab me, but I ran away before he could. Jumbo Josh kept trying to catch me from the vents, and Bambolina was right behind me. Both of them chased me into a corner, and the only door was locked. This was a dead end! Time for your punishment! No! It can't end like this! Suddenly, Josh's arm reached through the ceiling and crashed into Bambolina, knocking her out cold. Oops, I should go now. When Bambolina got knocked out, she dropped her ruler on the ground. I quickly grabbed it. This'll pack a punch! She also dropped a bunch of pretty colored blocks. The door opened on its own behind me, and I took the opportunity to escape. On days 22 through 25, I made my way out of Bambolina's maze and spotted the gold door again. How did this get here? I walked through, and sure enough, I was back in my base. I decided now would be a good time to polish it up and expand. I added more blocks to the main structure, increasing its overall size. I added the pink blocks I got from Bambolina to make an extension that looked like a doll house. Now the base would blend in even more. Next, I added a slide that doubled as an emergency escape from the base, in case someone found me while I was resting. As I was wrapping up and admiring my work, I looked over to see a pink door on the wall. Was this here before? I walked in and found a colorful party room full of cake and cookies. Sweet! Looks like I have some more food to keep me going for now. I walked back just in time to see the hatch above my room close. Whoever was helping me dropped armor and another letter. Wear this to protect yourself from the monsters. Zolfius is always watching. I don't know who's trying to help me in a place like this, but I'm gonna save Maggie and any other kids I might find. I put on my new armor just as Opalus Chick walked up to me. Oh no! How did you get in here? Don't look at me like that! I'm taking you back to your mom before she kills me! On days 26 through 28, I walked through the facility with Opalus Chick following me. I had to find your nest before your mom finds me. As I searched around the nest, I saw something run by in the darkness. Was that a person? Hey, wait! I ran to try and catch up with whoever I saw. The stranger stopped right at the edge of a bottomless pit. They turned around scared, but looked relieved to see me. Oh my gosh! Someone else is down here! Suddenly, Zolfius ascended from the void below. The player froze in shock. Zolfius, where are you keeping my little sister? Your sister is being prepared for our experiment. On day 100, she will be ready. Ready for what? For this! Without warning, Zolfius zapped the player with dark energy, and they started transforming into something horrible. His body went on all fours, and he had scaly green skin. He had transformed into a monster! <laughs> <laughs> Zolfius cackled and faded away. I thought the worst was over, but the monster turned to face me and grew in size. The monster jumped to another platform across the void. I couldn't reach it with my melee weapons. The turtle head could shoot powerful spheres of water, while the chameleon head had an extra long whip-like tongue. Ow! That stings! I hopped over to one of the other platforms and found a toy gun and darts. Well, it's better than nothing. Let's see what this can do. His water spheres were explosive and would deal loads of damage if I got too close. I did my best to avoid them and retaliate with my new weapon. Even with so much space between us, his powerful tongue could reach across the whole stage. With my power blast, my armor couldn't protect me much longer. I moved to jump from different platforms to throw him off. My toy gun was lowering his health bar blast by blast. I started to move too fast for him, and I could tell that I would be able to defeat him. I had to, and I would save my sister. I was close to losing, but a final barrage of rubber darts applied to the monster, and it sent them reeling backwards into the pit. Take that! I booked it out of there before any more trouble arrived, proud of my first victory. On days 29 through 32, I ran through the halls looking for where the little chick went while I was fighting that monster. After turning a corner, I finally found it. There you are! Are you okay, little guy? The chick looked really happy to see me. Strangely enough, it dropped a letter addressed to me. Where'd you get this? Dear Max, the strange monsters took me to a place full of water. They said I'm going to meet someone with lots of arms. Maggie. A place full of water? Where could that be? Ah! 
I recognized the squawk immediately. And sure enough, when I turned, it was Opula. Uh-oh. Opula charged towards me, ready to attack again. But before she could get a peck in, her baby jumped in front of me. <coughs> Opula stopped and listened to her baby, looking back and forth to me and it. It seemed like it was able to convince her that I was a friend. See? I'm chill. I'm trying to find my sister, just like you wanted to find your baby. <coughs> Opula started writing on a piece of paper and handed it to me. It was directions to somewhere in the facility called the Water Sector. That must be where they're keeping Maggie! I guess not everyone here is a monster after all. Thanks, Opula! It was a compliment! I left the chick with its mother and started to follow the map. On days 33 through 35, I descended lower into the facility until I found the water sector. This must be where Maggie is! As I entered the sector, I noticed a big orange mass at the center was moving. What's that? I tried to sneak past it, but it turned around and glared at me with its one eye. It was another monster. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm just looking for my sister. Ah, the others have warned me about you. I can offer you this. Leave. Now. Forget all about this place, and I'll let you live. Not without Maggie! Then I'm afraid you leave me with no choice. The monster wrapped around me with its orange tendrils and zapped me. <laughs> the shock was too much, and I started to pass out. Everything went black. While I was asleep, I had a nightmare that I was on an island with Zolvius watching over me. Stinger Flynn, you useless jellyfish. Bring me more children. I need to get stronger. What? I turned around and saw the orange monster had my sister. Max, help me! Let her go! We need her to complete the tests. Stay out of our way. Stinger Flynn zapped my sister with electricity and she transformed into a monster. No! Dispose of him. Maggie charged at me without hesitation. No, Maggie, it's me, Max! Suddenly, everything went black. On days 36 through 39, I woke up from my horrible nightmare. Oh, my head. I looked around and realized I was strapped to a table with no armor. I was unable to move, and Ban Ban was watching me from the corner of the room. Where am I? Ah, you're awake. This will be over soon. I just need your pancreas. You're not getting that! I struggled to break free of the table, but I couldn't escape. Just as I thought it was over, Opala broke through the door. <coughs> she ran at Ban Ban and attacked him with her powerful beak. The two monsters clashed in an epic battle. Opala was quick with her attacks and managed to land multiple critical hits on Ban Ban. However, even with her precise attacks, he was able to take them like nothing and fight back with his powerful arms. If it wasn't for Opala showing up, Ban Ban would have overpowered me easily. While the two monsters clashed, I took the chance to continue struggling on the table. Finally, I managed to break free. Let's go! Opala ran up to me and I hopped on her back. The two of us ran off, leaving Ban Ban in the dust. I'll get that pancreas, just you wait. On days 40 through 43, I escaped Man Man's attack on Opala's back. Thanks for saving me back there. The two of us discovered another set of golden doors and headed inside to regroup. I knew that Opala had been helping me now, so I decided to make her a spot to call her own. I built a nest for Opala and added fake trees around it so she and her chick would feel at home. I hope you guys like it. Opala tossed over a strange note to me. Find three of my eggs and you will be rewarded. You got yourself a deal. Any reward would be incredibly helpful in my quest to find Maggie. So I began to search for the three eggs. I searched around the base and found the first one sitting inside of the sandbox. Gotcha. Next, I went into the secret room and found the second egg behind the table. Just one more to go. Where's that third one? I scouted out the room and saw a strange new entrance I had never seen before. Where does this lead? I walked through it, but I realized too late that it led directly into a hole in the ground. Ah! On days 44 through 46, I landed inside of a pool of water, breaking my fall. Where am I? I looked around the room to find that I was standing in some sort of obstacle course. At the very top of it was the last of Opala's eggs. I need to get up there. I began to jump from platform to platform, trying to reach the egg from high above. I was making good progress when suddenly I heard footsteps. I looked behind me and discovered a spider-like blue monster following me. Ah! The creature began to chase after me. He was quick on his feet, so I had to pick up the pace. I hopped platform to platform as quickly as I could, until I finally managed to grab the egg. I did it! I looked back and realized that the spider monster was climbing on the walls after me. I didn't have anywhere to run. I was forced to take a leap of faith off the platform above. Cannonball! 
Whoa! I managed to land in the pool of water once again and fled through the golden doors. Phew, that was close. I returned Opala's eggs to her and she happily jumped around. As promised, Opala handed me a reward, which was a letter. To find another clue, head west until you spot the red door. This must be the way to Maggie. Thank you. On days 47 through 50, I followed the clue Opala gave me to find the massive Ban Ban door waiting for me. This thing is creepy. I tried to get through the door, but it was locked tight. I need a key card to get inside. I better get looking. I began to navigate the halls of the facility. Things seemed to be safe until the ground began to tremble. It must be Jumbo Josh. I walked into the next room, and sure enough, Jumbo Josh rounded the corner. I ducked down into a hiding spot as the horrible green monster walked by. Luckily, he didn't spot me. If he catches me, I'm a goner. Time to stealth my way through this one. I carefully walked from room to room, being sure to duck into cover whenever Jumbo Josh came close. I thought for a second he had heard me, but I stayed hidden until he walked away. Finally, I spotted the keycard sitting on a nearby table. Bingo! I went to grab it, but Jumbo Josh beat me to it. I gotcha! Ah! On days 51 through 54, I was being chased by Jumbo Josh. My legs couldn't keep up, so I tried to duck down behind cover. Surely he can't get me here! Unfortunately for me, Jumbo Josh was incredibly powerful. He smashed through the blocks like they were nothing. He's super strong! Wait a sec, that gives me an idea! I rushed towards the Ban Ban door and stood in front of it. Hey, big guy, I'm over here! You're mine! Jumbo Josh began to charge full speed towards me. Before he hit me, I jumped out of the way and he smashed the door down. Woohoo! I don't feel so good. While Jumbo Josh was dazed, I ran through the now open door. Thanks, sucker! I managed to escape him and found a swimming pool area. I investigated the area and found a mysterious chest. I opened it and found more rubber armor as well as a letter. I quickly put it on and read the note. I'm so scared. I'm in this strange dark room for the books. Max, please find me soon. Books? She must be inside of a library. I need to find it quick. Suddenly, the ground trembled again. Jumbo Josh was awake. Where are you? I better keep moving before he finds me. On days 55 through 57, I began searching for the whereabouts of the library. I navigated the halls of the kindergarten until finally spotting the library in the distance. There it is! I began to walk towards it, but I noticed that one of the nearby doors was open. I peeked inside and saw Jumbo Josh and Ban Ban talking. I better listen. I wonder what valuable intel they have. That annoying human got away again. What a pest. I just want to feast on him already. Do you think Slow Selene is going to catch him? Definitely. Everyone underestimates Slow Selene, but she always catches her prey. Don't worry. We'll be eating well soon. We. Oui, the player is my meal. What? No way. I'm going to eat his organs. The two began to fight each other with all of their might. They both swang their powerful fists into each other in a frenzy. Neither side was willing to give in. Despite Jumbo Josh's size, Ban Ban smarts were able to keep him at bay. He evaded his attacks when he could and went in for critical strikes. I watched for a while, but things kept getting more and more heated. They were beginning to get too rowdy, and I didn't want to stick around much longer. While they were busy, I ran past them and ran through the entrance to the library. I better keep that slow Celine in mind. She sounds like bad news. On days 58 through 61, I arrived at the library in hopes of finding the clues I needed. I looked down and spotted a bracelet on the ground, which I quickly picked up. This belonged to Maggie! She was here! I put it on for good luck and gained knockback resistance. Just then, I spotted another player crouching behind one of the bookshelves. Oh my gosh! I'm so happy to see another human! Shh! Don't move! Suddenly, I spotted a giant snail slithering around the room. What is that? That's Slow Celine. She will only get you if you don't play red light, green light with her. Only move when she stops moving. Where are we going? Over there. The player pointed towards the golden door exit. We would have to navigate the maze of bookshelves and make it to the other side. Let's do this. I did as I was told and stayed still. The massive snail turned the corner towards us and stopped slithering. Hello? Now! The two of us made a run for it, but to our horror, Slow Celine was waiting around the corner. I stopped in my tracks, but she startled the other player. Ah! The player kept running as Slow Celine slithered again. Suddenly, Slow Celine went super fast and killed the player in a single blow. <laughs> I began to carefully navigate the library, stopping each time Slow Celine was on the move. 
The place was like a labyrinth, and I had to be careful not to make a wrong turn. All the while, Slow Celine was still hunting me down. I had to play her twisted game of red light green light in order to survive. It was a long trek, but I was getting close to the golden door at the other end of the library. Almost there! I waited for my chance, and just as Slow Celine stopped, I made a run for the door. On days 62 through 64, I managed to flee through the door back into the safety of the base room. Whew, I did it! Now that I was back in my base, I figured I should put in some more work. I began to add a third playhouse to the build using all sorts of blue colored blocks to expand on each of the towers of the playhouses. Next, I decided that the solid walls of the place were getting kind of bland, so I used a bunch of color blocks to make a rainbow mural. Looking good. I was about to continue my search for Maggie when Opal's chick ran up towards the door. Do you want to show me something? I followed the chick outside of the golden doors and through the halls of the kindergarten. Suddenly, a purple kangaroo hopped out of nowhere. I am Queen Bonsalina, and you have both been very naughty. She grabbed the baby chick and stuffed them in her pouch. Next up is you. I made a run for it. Without a real advantage, I wasn't going to make it out of there in one piece. I ran through the facility, looking for a place to hide. Finally, I managed to find an open utility closet to hide in and get the kangaroo off my tail. I need to save the chick. She's in trouble. On days 65 through 68, I was searching for Queen Bouncelina in hopes of saving the baby chick. As I searched, I found feathers on the ground like when I first met the baby bird. She must be leaving these as a sign. I better follow them. I followed the trail and discovered Queen Bouncelina with the baby chick trapped in a cage. You'll make an excellent meal for my children. Not so fast. I jumped out and ambushed the oversized kangaroo. Get them, my children. She suddenly summoned a group of her baby kangaroo monsters from her pouch to fight me. Oh, brother. For being such little guys, they sure packed a punch. I fired back with my toy gun, but the darts hardly did any damage. They're so menacing. Then I swapped to the ruler and started whacking them. I took one out, but it just made them angrier. Despite their numbers, I managed to defeat the swarm. My babies. You'll pay for this. Queen Bouncelina herself came at me with everything she had, but I stood my ground. Ah! Her magic made me super nauseous. What's going on? Why do I feel sick all of a sudden? I switched between my gun, ruler, and sword to keep her away, but she was relentless. Get back here. Ugh, I'm taking so much damage. I have to end this quickly. Even with the power of my limited weapons, I managed to overpower the monster. Ah! Oh my gosh. I actually did it! I freed the chick from her prison and she happily jumped around me. Just then, I spotted a letter on the ground. What's that? I have taken the new subject known as Maggie to the gym. Pickles will know what to do with her. Who's Pickles? I need to get there before they hurt my sister! On days 69 through 72, I followed the note until finally arriving at the gym. This place is eerie! I looked around the room and spotted a chest with a letter as well as a pair of bouncy rubber boots. Max, if you're reading this, grab the trophy. If you do, Pickles will become your ally. Maggie! Wait, is this a warning from my sister? I put on the new boots and found that they increased my jumping ability. This will definitely be useful. Suddenly, all the lights in the room turned on at once and a giant blue elephant appeared before me. You must be Pickles. Time for gym class. Grab the trophy or face death! The oversized monster began to attack me. I knew I didn't stand a chance against someone of his power, so I scouted out the room while fending off his attacks. Where's that trophy? Just then, I spotted it sitting at the top of an obstacle course. I knew what I had to do. I got to climbing. It was my only way out of this. I started the course and was faced with a number of different challenges. Spikes, magma blocks, trip wires, and deadly falls all laid in my path. All the while, Pickle shot projectiles at me to try and slow me down. Thanks to my jumping boots, I was able to clear the more difficult gaps in the floor. I had a few close calls, but I knew I was getting close to the finish line. Pickles was relentless with his attacks, but I continued platforming until finally making it to the trophy. You did it! You're an excellent student! You're not gonna kill me anymore? Death is only for naughty students. You completed my obstacle course, so we're friends now. Out of nowhere, a massive tree-like mob fell from the ceiling. What is that? This is bad. Tall Victor is coming for us. Up on my back, quick. On days 73 through 75, I rode on Pickle's back while Victor chased behind. Numerous obstacles stood in our way, but thanks to Pickle's size and power, we were able to mow through them like they were nothing. This is awesome! 
We stormed through the halls of the kindergarten while Victor was close behind. His long arms came close to hitting us, but even with his power, Pickles was able to pull through. We managed to push ahead of Victor. Come on, Pickles, let's get out of here. I thought we were unstoppable until we were met with a giant gap in the floor. On the other side was a golden door, but we had no way to get to it. How are we going to cross? Build a path. I jumped off Pickles' back and used my blocks to start building a bridge to cross. I built as fast as I could, but I had to make it wide enough for Pickles to cross too. Victor turned the corner. I didn't have enough time. I'll hold him off. Go to the cafeteria. You will find your sister there. Pickles ran back and clashed with Victor. Despite his strength, I could tell the chase had weakened the elephant. He succumbed to Victor's power and lost the battle. I built as quickly as I could and reached the other side of the gap. I ran through the golden doors to safety and didn't look back. Thanks for everything, Pickles. On days 76 through 79, I regrouped in my base to make my next action plan. Pickles was talking about a cafeteria. Looks like I know where I need to look next. Before setting off on my journey, I figured it was time to give the base some more TLC. I started by adding a face to the blue playhouse to look more like Pickles, in his honor. Huh, something's missing. I added a trunk slide to really bring out his likeness. That's better. At the end of the slide, I built a gym area to honor Coach Pickles even more. I made sure it was complete with basketball hoops, a tetherball pole, and even the trophy I had gotten from his challenge. Next, I added a couple of seesaws and placed plushies on either side. With that, my expansion was completed. I'm starting to kind of like this base. Suddenly, I heard a strange noise coming from somewhere in the facility. Is that music? I followed the source of the noise to find a room with a massive pit in the center. The longer I listened to the melody, the stranger I began to feel. What's with this lullaby? <sighs> I'm falling asleep. Just then, a strange yellow monster popped out from the hole. Finally, a new toy to play with. No, it's a trap. <sighs> Who are you? I'm the Nibbler, and I'm gonna gobble on your insides. No, I, I can't hold on. Before I could run, I succumbed to the power of the music. Everything went dark. On days 80 through 83, I woke up in a strange new room. All around me were pillars and trash. Did that monster drag me down into the hole? Like clockwork, the monster approached me. <laughs> You're in Nibbler's domain now. I'm getting out of here and you can't stop me. The oversized yellow beast attacked me with everything he had. The Nibbler used his massive fist to try and crush me. He was so strong that his attacks broke the ground beneath us. I started off by shooting him down with my toy gun for some good damage, but it wasn't doing enough. I decided to get in close and hit him down with my toy sword. Thanks to my new jumping boots, I was able to evade his destructive attacks while getting in some good hits of my own. I rotated between all the different weapons at my disposal and hit him down as much as I could. But he kept coming at me. I fought as hard as I could, but even with my weapons and armor, he was too powerful. I have to think of plan B. I looked around and got a great idea. I quickly ran in front of one of the pillars and called out to the Nibbler. Hey, come and get me. The Nibbler charged at me full speed and I quickly dodged away, causing him to hit the pillar instead. Ah, that hurts. The enraged beast continued to attack, but I led him into pillar after pillar. After one final blow, he went down once and for all. Whew, that was close. I thought I was stranded, but out of nowhere, a new doorway appeared. Whoa, what's through there? On days 84 through 86, I walked through the door to find that I had finally reached the cafeteria. This is where Pickles told me to go. Time to look for clues. I investigated the room, and sure enough, I found another one of Maggie's notes. Dear Max, I think the end is near. Zolfius and the other monsters are telling me that the tests are about to begin. I made a strange laboratory. Please help me before it's too late. Maggie. I'm running out of time. Where could this room be? <laughs> Chef Pig's to hungry. I turned around and found a horrifying looking pig. Ah! Feed me and you live. Uh, okay. I collected all the food sitting in the cafeteria and handed it over to him. The horrible monster gobbled it down and grew bigger in size. More. I handed him all the food I had in my inventory. Suddenly, he grew even bigger. That's all I have. Are you full yet? No, more, 
Give Pigster more. I'm all out. I can't. Then I'll eat you. Pigster charged at me and began to attack. He hit me with his powerful fists and tried to eat me. I used everything I had to keep him at bay. I slashed him down with my toy sword and Bambolina's ruler, but his massive mouth almost swallowed my weapons whole. I did my best to dodge his attacks and take cover behind the cafeteria tables, but he would jump on top of them to continue his onslaught. I switched to my toy gun and fired from afar as a last resort. Although at first it seemed to be doing good damage, Pigster began to eat my bullets. The pig gorged down on all my projectiles, causing him to grow bigger and more powerful. I knew at this rate I was gonna lose, so I made a run for it. On days 87 through 89, as I was running from Chef Pigster, I found another golden door. I fled through it and narrowly escaped his attack. Things are getting more dire. I have to find out where this laboratory is. I decided this was a good time to regroup, so I got to work on a few more things around the base. I started by adding an artificial tree with a treehouse on top. As I finished up my first build, Opla walked up to me. You want to show me something? Lead the way! I followed Opla to her nest, where she showed me that the three eggs I had retrieved a while back had hatched into more chicks. Oh, the babies are so cute! I decided to make them their own play area to enjoy. I made sure it was full of different toys, so they could play for hours if they wanted to. Once I was done, all the chicks went to play. I'm glad they enjoyed it, but I needed to look for more clues about Maggie. Hey, Opala, do you know where a laboratory is? Opala dropped me another letter to read. The laboratory is at the deepest point in the facility. You must use the south elevator to reach it. Then I better head south. I'm coming for you, Maggie. On days 90 through 92, I began heading towards the south elevator. As I traveled, I discovered a strange room full of blue monsters standing around. Are they alive? I walked up to one of them and stared at them, but they wouldn't move at all. It was almost as if they were statues. Maybe it's just my imagination. I ignored them for now, but as soon as I opened the door to the next room, one of them turned to me. No one passes through here. You're alive? I'm just passing through. No can do. I'm the great Captain Fiddles, and you're intruding on our turf. I looked around and realized all the blue figures were now staring directly at me. Ah! Get him, boys! All of the blue monsters began to swarm me like bees. Luckily, I had plenty of confidence to fight back now. They ganged up and started flinging me around with their punches, so I started swinging at them with my toy sword. Unfortunately, my sword broke mid-battle. They kept coming, so I began shooting the back with my toy gun. My jumping boots helped me jump higher out of their reach. They kept doing their best to bring me back down, but that wouldn't stop me. I have grown much stronger since the beginning of my journey. I managed to take out the horde of blue monsters all by myself. Nothing will stop me now. One of the monsters dropped a purple sword. It looked like a bouncy toy sword on the outside, but I could tell this was the strongest weapon I've gotten yet. I continued moving south until I finally arrived at the elevator. I was only a few steps away from saving my sister. Here I come, Maggie. Think again. Suddenly, Zolvius appeared in the elevator shaft. On days 93 through 95, I was face to face with the horrible Zolfius. I'm afraid your journey ends here. No! I won't let you hurt Maggie! She's a necessary sacrifice for my plans! Forget your plans! Why are you doing this? Because the more monsters I make, the more power there is for me. All of these stupid monsters do my bidding! Sorry to break it to you, but Opal and Pickles are my allies, not yours! I already know of Opilla, and I've already sent someone to take care of her. What did you do to her? Go find out for yourself. <laughs> I wanted to save Maggie, but after all that Opala did for me, I had to make sure she was okay. I quickly ran out of the room and back towards the base. When I arrived, I saw Ban Ban standing over Opala. She had been badly wounded. Leave her alone! Looks like my favorite human has arrived, and just before I was about to feast on this pathetic bird. The only thing you'll be feasting on is my bullets! Although your quips are amusing, your time is up, Max. Hand over your pancreas. Ban Ban charged me with the intent to finish this once and for all. What he didn't know was I was determined now more than ever to win. I was tired of running. This ended here! I took out my toy gun and started blasting. He was hit with countless rubber bullets, but they didn't do much damage to him. I switched to my new bouncy sword and it sent him bouncing backwards. He was resilient and kept coming at me. Using the jungle gem of a base to my advantage, I climbed up to attack from above. He tried to follow, but it was no use. I have the high ground now, Ban Ban. After a fierce battle, I managed to defeat the monster. I rushed to Opala to make sure she was okay. Are you okay? <coughs> That's it. We have to stop this now. 
On days 96 through 98, I began preparing for the final battle ahead. I wanted to leave the base in tip-top shape, so I started by adding the finishing touches. I began building monkey bars for anyone that wanted to have some more fun. Next, I crafted a trampoline to practice my jumping to help evade any other monsters in my way to really complete the build. Once everything was done, my base was finally complete. As I admired my base, the mysterious hatch in the ceiling opened. Instead of items falling through it, a person fell down from above. Who are you? Finally, I escaped that horrible room. I'm a parent looking for my lost son in this terrible kindergarten. I've been looking for my sister. Looks like we're in the same boat. My name is Max. My name is Marty. I thought exactly the same thing. When I saw you in the room below, I knew I had to help. Well, thank you for everything. I promise I'll save both Maggie and your son. Thank you. Please take this to help in your quest. The parent tossed over a new sturdy helmet to complete my armor set. I'm ready to take on Zolfius. Before setting off, I decided to add one final touch to the base. I added an additional room for Marty to stay in while I went to save his son. He'll definitely be safer here. Thank you, Max. Just then, Opla walked up to me. You want to show me something? She took me to the party room where her and her chicks had set up a good luck party just for me. Oh, is this a thank you for everything I've done? I took the time to celebrate with my friends and munch down on some cake. I really enjoyed this moment of peace before having to face my most difficult challenge yet. Once I was feeling completely rested, I knew it was time to continue my quest. Zolfius, here I come. On day 99, I arrived at the south elevator, but nobody was there. Is Zolfius just gonna let me through? Suddenly, a massive Jumbo Josh emerged from the void. He wouldn't let that happen. He assigned me to guard duty. Let me through. As if. Zolfius will reward me modestly for this. Weren't you a subject of his too? You don't have to fight for him. This kindergarten is all I have left, so I'm going to defeat you here and now and give you to Zolfius for my prize. I couldn't take no for an answer. I readied my weapon and shot at Jumbo Josh with my toy gun. He charged me with immense speeds. I quickly dodged and ran across the sides of the void. I whipped out my toy gun and shot as many rubber darts as I could at once, but most of them bounced off of Jumbo Josh and down below into the darkness. Josh fired at me with explosive projectiles. Luckily, with my bouncy armor, some of it deflected and I didn't take critical damage. I won't give up that easily, Josh. I still have Maggie to live for. I enraged Josh even more and he charged at me. We were face to face. I switched to my bouncy sword and slashed away. Josh's thick skin protected him from the blows of my blade, but I could tell it was definitely doing something. I don't want to do this, Josh, but you're giving me no options, man. I managed to get a few critical hits on Josh and defeated the oversized green mob, clearing the way for my final opponent. Get ready, Zolfius. You're finished. On day 100, I exited the south elevator and arrived at the laboratory. There, I saw Maggie and Marty's son locked in a cage. Zolfius loomed over them menacingly. Let my sister go or face my wrath! You're foolish if you think you can defeat me. You're just a mere human. You'll regret dismissing this human! <laughs> is that so? Well, too bad for you this is the last time you'll see your precious sister. Not on my watch! I charged in towards Zolfius and began the final battle. He shot down lightning all around me. I dodged as best as I could, but he still managed to get some good hits. When he got closer, I smacked him in the head with Bambolina's ruler. It didn't do much damage, so I went back to my sword instead. When he was too far to reach, I switched to my bullets and fired away until I was all out. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it, but I held on to save both the kids in front of me. I wasn't going to let them get hurt. With one final strike, I defeated Zolfius once and for all. I did it! I broke Maggie and the little boy out of their cage. I thought the day was saved, but I could feel myself being transported into a new dimension. On day one, I was Spider-Man and I was being chased by the entire Spider Society. Loads of Spider-Men were using everything in their power to stop me. I tried to throw them off my tail, but every turn I made led me face to face with another Spider-Man. I knew that I didn't stand a chance against their numbers. I swung left and right and tried to slow them down with my web shooting abilities, but there were too many of them. Things got worse when out of nowhere, Miguel, the leader of the Spider Society, dropped down in front of me. He stopped me in my tracks with his webs, leaving me defenseless. Fine. Finally, I will dispose of you once and for all! Suddenly, a portal ripped open near me, and Miles Morales emerged. He jumped Miguel and landed a surprise attack that left him dazed. Come with me, quick! I freed myself from the web trap and followed Miles through the portal. 
Everyone get them! On day two, Miles and I fled through the portal into another dimension that was made of Legos. Miguel and the rest of the Spider Society followed close behind. What do they want with us? We're both anomalies. They want to eliminate us. What? We navigated the dimension of plastic until spotting a bridge under construction over a massive hole. I have an idea. Miles and I booked it over the bridge and the Spider-Man followed us onto it. Unfortunately for them, they were too heavy and caused the whole build to crumble. The Spider-Man plummeted into the chasm below. Not bad, but that won't hold them for long. Miles opened another portal to make our escape, but Lego Spider-Man jumped out instead. Ha <laughs> ha! Taste my Lego power! The tiny hero uses building powers to create a wall at the speed of light. Luckily, Miles and I stayed on our toes and managed to clear the jump with our web swinging. Just as we made it to the portal, the massive spider rex came out in front of us. Hold on tight! Miles opened the new portal beneath our feet, causing us both to fall through into the unknown. On day three, Miles and I landed in another dimension with a massive city. Where are we? Suddenly, a massive mecha dropped down in front of us. Inside was a girl controlling it. Welcome to my dimension, Max and Miles. I'm coming for you. Don't do this, Penny. Sorry, you know I have to do this. The mecha lunged at us and we had no choice but to fight. Penny started by using a stomping attack that caused debris from the ground to fly all around us. Miles and I did our best to evade her onslaught, but armed with her mech, Penny was a force to be reckoned with. Our spider punches did barely any damage to the mecha's sturdy armored body. Even with two Spider-Men against one, this battle was tough. She used her powerful metallic fist to smash into us for loads of health. At this rate, we couldn't keep up much longer. Luckily, we had a trump card of our own. Miles had the ability to use electric cool attacks which could fry the mecha circuits for good damage. I did my best to support Miles with my web shooting attacks while he went in close and zapped the robot as much as he could. We were neck and neck, but suddenly my body started to glitch out. Ah, what's happening? You don't have a multiverse bracelet? This could be easier than I thought. I'll meet up with you later. You need that bracelet or else you'll die. Before I could protest, Miles pushed me into the portal, sending me to another dimension. On days four through seven, I fell through the portal inside of a strange room. When I looked around, I spotted the multiversal bracelet on a pedestal. That must be it. I walked up to it when suddenly Miguel jumped down in front of me. Stop right there. What do you want with us? You're both disrupting the timeline. I'm going to eliminate you or else everything we know will cease to exist. Just then, Miles jumped up next to the bracelet. Max, catch. Miles tossed over the bracelet and opened up a portal. Follow me. He warped away, leaving me alone with Miguel. I now had a bracelet of my own in my possession, but there was one huge problem. How do I work this thing? Miguel attacked me as I fumbled with my new contraption. His fist really packed a punch, dealing significant damage to my health. I dodged as much as I could, but couldn't evade him fast enough to avoid his attacks. He threw his punches with such immense force and speed that I couldn't even react fast enough. It seemed like it was no use. I couldn't get the bracelet to work. Isn't there a manual for this thing? He was too powerful for me in my current state. I desperately tinkered with the bracelet until by some miracle, a portal opened before me. I escaped the facility with only half a heart remaining. On days 8 through 10, I appeared in another dimension with Miles. The bracelet had worked successfully. Glad you're okay for now, but we can't relax. Miguel has a tracking device on these bracelets. What are we gonna do? Let's make a base. That way we could be shielded from the tracking. Miles and I quickly got to work on our own spider base. We wanted it to reflect our identities as Spider-Men, so we planned to make it shaped as a giant spider. We started with the main structure, which would be the body of the spider, and filled it with everything we would need for survival. It didn't look like much yet, but eventually it would have all eight legs to fit all of the recruits we found. We were getting close to finishing when I spotted a portal opening in the distance. Oh no, Miguel is closing in, hurry! We ran inside and watched as Miguel began to look around the area like a bloodhound. Your tracking both went offline, but it doesn't matter. If you want to stop me, you have to recruit more than just one Spider-Man. I will find and eliminate both of you. Miguel walked away, but suddenly my spider sense went off. I turned around and the Prowler was standing before us. Hide! Miles vanished into thin air with his invisibility powers and the Prowler lunged at me instead. On days 11 through 14, the Prowler slashed at me with his swift claws. The two of us clashed in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I tried to punch him down with my fists, but whenever I got to close, the Prowler would land blows with his deadly claws for massive damage. I knew I couldn't run him blindly, so I tried to trap him in my webs to slow him down. This worked and let me land some solid hits, but he was far too powerful. Even with my nimble movements, I wasn't able to keep up with the Prowler. He had severely weakened me until suddenly Miles ran in front of me. Please stop. Look, Uncle Aaron, it's me. Miles, do it. Kill him. 
To my surprise, the Prowler lowered his weapon. But in a matter of seconds, the sound of a gunshot rang through the area. The Prowler died before us. No! Not again! A large man in a black suit stepped forward. It was the villain Kingpin. I'll do it myself. Hey, we gotta go, Miles! We need more help! Yeah. You're right, let's go. I used my bracelet to open up a new portal and fled through with Miles. Unfortunately for us, Kingpin ran close behind. On days 15 through 17, Miles and I emerged in another dimension with Kingpin close behind us. We were in the sprawling city of London. Miles was beginning to lag behind and Kingpin caught up. He smashed his fist into him, causing him to pass out. Miles! Hey, big guy, come and get me! Kingpin directed his attention towards me and I kept running. I had to keep him away from Miles. I ran until I was met with a dead end. Kingpin loomed over me with his massive fists. I thought I was surely done for. Suddenly, a punk rock Spider-Man jumped down in front of me. Oi, don't just stand there. Let's kick this corporate loser's butt. Kingpin smashed at us with his massive fists and dealt tons of damage whenever we tried to get up close. Spider-Punk and I realized we needed more footing to take this guy on, so we lured him out of the alley and continued to fight in the street. Kingpin jumped high in the air and smashed into both of us one by one. I tried to slow him down with my webs while Spider-Punk strummed his guitar and sent shockwaves at him. Spider-Punk's music was so strong that it even sent someone as massive as Kingpin flying back. He tried to trip us up by punching the ground and sending debris flying at us, but we are more savvy than he thought. We dodged his attacks and continued to overwhelm them with our own. He would fall to the ground, but the man was like a tank. He always got back up and kept fighting. Although the two of us were getting tired, we knew we had to end this here. We kept up the attacks, doing everything we could to win. Thanks to the help of the spider punk, we managed to defeat Kingpin once and for all. Whoa, you're super cool. Who are you? Call me Hobie. Just then, the chief officer came running towards us with their weapons out. Get those delinquents! Cops? Aren't you a hero? I don't use labels. Let's move. On days 18 through 21, the two of us were in a heated chase with the police. Every twist and turn we made, we were met with hordes of policemen. Eventually, there was nowhere else to run. We have you surrounded. Surrender, spider punk! Look. We don't want any trouble. I'll never surrender to the system. Hobie shut all the cops down with his webs, trapping them in place. Follow me, I know a shortcut. I followed behind the spider punk who led me to a manhole. The two of us hopped inside before the cops could find us. Wow, you're pretty resourceful. We could use a spider like you on our team. Mm, I don't know. Well, think about it for a bit. I looked around and realized we were inside of the sewer systems of the city. I thought surely we could avoid trouble down here, but the ground began to tremble. What's that? Looks like the cops are filling the place with water. We gotta move, nah. On days 22 through 25, Spider-Punk and I were running through the sewers trying to find a way out before the water swept us away. It seemed like every turn we made was a dead end. As we ran further and further, I saw a light in the distance. Look, there's an opening over there. Spider-Punk and I ran out of the sewer, narrowly avoiding being submerged by the rushing flood. That was close. When we thought we were safe, we turned around to see that a giant monstrous spider was looming behind us. What the heck is that thing? The spider monster began covering Spider-Punk in webs, making him unable to move. You're on your own with this one, mate. Nobody was here to help me this time, but I had to free Hobie. I went in close with my fists and started to beat down the beast in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was eight legs against two, but I was gonna take my chances. I punctured the beast while it retaliated with its poisonous pincers. Normally, I would try to trap it in webs, but it was a spider too. It had the ability to climb through webs like nothing, so I was forced to fight them head on. The spider began to spit different types of venom at me. I used my superhero agility and web swinging to try and avoid the attacks and went in close for damage whenever there was an opening. The beast was tough, and its poisonous attacks brought me down to my last heart. It was anyone's game, but I knew I had to protect Hobby no matter what. With that, I managed to stomp out the arachnid once and for all. I took the chance I had and freed Hobie from his web prison. All right, kid, you got skills. I'll join your team. Oh, and take this. Hobie handed me his guitar, and I gained five more hearts. Whoa, thanks. Suddenly, another portal opened up before us. Miguel had finally caught up. I've got this one. Catch you later. Hobie opened our own portal behind us, and I did what I was told. On days 26 through 28, I fell through a portal into a new dimension. Everything here was tinted pink and blue. Whose dimension could this be? Just then, my spider sense tingled. I could immediately tell that Miles was somewhere in the city. I swung around the city with my webs looking for any sign of Miles. But as I turned a corner, I saw a building completely on fire. Oh no! What happened here? My question was quickly answered when I spotted a giant lizard being fought off by this universe's spider woman. 
Time to knock out some bad guys. I swung into action and began to help the other Spider-Woman take out the nasty lizard. He was a powerful warrior that dual-wielded two steel hammers. He swung his weapons at us and smashed into our super suits for massive damage. I knew he was a force to be reckoned with up close, but we knew our webs wouldn't do enough damage to pierce through his tough armor. We had to get in close with our fists if we wanted to stand a chance. We tried to beat him down with our super-powered punches while we dodged his heavy swings. Whenever we needed some distance, I would take out my new Spider-Punk guitar and give it a strum that sent him flying. The two of us were starting to get an edge when the lizard smashed his hammers into the ground, powering him up even more. We kept fighting the best we could, but it was anyone's game. After a long fight, Spider-Woman and I wiped out the lizard foe. <sighs> hey, are you Max? Yeah, that's me. How do you know my name? I'm Gwen. Miles said you'd be here. You know Miles? Can you take me to him? Sure, follow me. Gwen and I swung through the city until we got to an apartment where Miles was laying on the bed. Miles, you're okay. Hey, Max, good to see you. You guys caused Kingpin some trouble, I heard. Yeah, me and Hobie took care of him. We gotta be more careful. More danger could be behind any door. Spider-Man in my apartment? You're all under arrest. On days 29 through 32, Gwen's dad had mistaken us all for villains and was putting us under arrest. I knew there was no easy way out of this. I had no choice but to use Spider-Punk's guitar. I strummed a chord and the burst of sound sent the captain flying backwards. We have to go, now! What about my dad? I'm gonna get you, spiders. Ugh. He'll be fine. I used my bracelet to open a portal, escaping through it with Miles and Gwen. When we got to the other side, we were back in my base. Oi. Hobie! I'm glad you're all right. Thanks for holding off Miguel for me. I knew Miguel would still be looking for us, so I decided to reinforce our base. I started by adding a farm so that we could have a consistent source of food for the team to snack on. Next, I added a room for Hobie to call his own. I made sure that bits and pieces of his hometown sprinkled around, along with some musical instruments for him to play when he's bored. Afterwards, I made a room for Gwen. I used lots of pink, white, and blue blocks to fit her vibe and added a drum set for her to rock out on. Lastly, I added legs to the base to make it look more like a spider and function as hallways to the underground rooms. With that, my expansion was complete. Thanks, Max. But now's no time to relax. I know someone else that can help our team. Let's go! Gwen opened another portal outside, and the two of us continued searching for more backup. On days 33 through 35, Gwen and I arrived in another dimension where we stood near the Taj Mahal. Is this India? Kinda. Pop should be around here somewhere. Let's split up and look. Gwen and I went our separate ways and I began to navigate the city around me. As I looked around, I spotted a massive monster fighting another Spider-Man. That must be the guy. I better help. I swung into the fray to help the guy out. The monster was nimble like us and was able to perform incredible acrobatics in combat. He was armed with a staff, which he used to smash into us for massive damage. Luckily, we were fast too. We rushed in and punched into him whenever we could find an opening. He was three times our size, making it hard to deal enough damage, but we had the will to keep fighting. Suddenly, he unleashed a blazing fire breath attack that set both me and the other Spider-Man ablaze. My hearts were dwindling fast, but I couldn't give up. We continued our onslaught while the ape smashed his staff into the ground, sending a massive shockwave our way. We both endured the hit and cornered him right where we wanted. Between both of our punches, we were breaking through his armor and I could tell the beast was growing weak. With one final blow from the other Spider-Man, the monster went down, but so did he. No! I rushed to his side, only to discover that he was just sitting and relaxing. What the? Aren't you hurt? Nah, being a Spider-Man is easy. I'm Pavitra, but you can call me Pav. I'm Max. Nice hair, by the way. I explained to Pav my mission to recruit more Spider-Men to help stop Miguel. Luckily for me, he agreed. Suddenly, a portal opened beneath Pav, causing him to fall into the unknown, and Miguel jumped out in front of me. Oh no! He tracked us here! On days 36 to 39, I was being chased by Miguel. He was extremely fast, but so was I. I used my web-slinging abilities to send him in a high-speed chase. I tried to throw him off my tail, but he seemed to be waiting around every corner. Is my bracelet giving me away? I found a corner to hide in, but my spider sense went off. Ah! Just then, Gwen dropped down in front of me. Don't worry, it's just me. I have an idea, but you're not gonna like it. Gwen snatched my multi-dimensional bracelet and swung away. I watched as Miguel foolishly chased her instead, but now I was at risk of glitching to death. 
Unfortunately, I didn't have a moment to breathe. A new portal tore open in front of me and Spider-Rex in an upgraded form emerged. I finally found you. What happened to you? You can talk now too? The latest Spider Society tech has empowered me. Let me show you. The Rex charged me with his jaws open. I tried to evade his attacks, but he knelt down and bit me for big damage. If it wasn't for Hobie's guitar, I would have been swallowed whole. I went in close with my superpowered fist and fought the massive dino one on one. His thick scales and armor made it hard to deal much damage. On top of that, he was armed with incredible weapons. Spider Rex unleashed a mighty roar that sent a huge wave of projectiles at me. I did my best to evade his moves and retaliate with my own. We were neck and neck, and I wasn't sure how much longer I would be able to hold on. I kept fighting and finally managed to overcome the beast. He dropped a razor web attack and I suddenly gained five hearts. Sitting around and glitching is a death sentence. I gotta get out of here. I looked around and spotted the Spider Rex's portal was still open, but it was closing fast. I sprinted full speed into the portal just as it closed for good. On days 40 through 43, I fell through the other side of the portal to discover I had returned to the Spider Society. There, I was inside of a room full of trapped anomalies. I looked around and spotted Pav imprisoned in one of the cages. Coming, buddy! I broke him out and told him that we needed to find Gwen quickly. She was in trouble when I started to glitch out like crazy. Whoa, slow down there. You need to find a new bracelet, otherwise you won't stay alive much longer. Come with me. Pav and I kept our heads low and began to stealth around the spider infested facility. We were keeping ourselves hidden when suddenly one of the guard's spidey senses went off. Come here quick. Pav and I shot our webs at a pillar and climbed upwards just in time before the spider guard found us. With them off our tail, we kept moving deeper, keeping our guards up high. Finally, we arrived at the room that held the bracelet, but a spider woman was waiting outside. I've got this one. Keep going without me. Pav walked out towards the woman and started to work his charm on her. I thought an idea like that surely wouldn't work, but to my surprise, it did just the trick. While she was distracted, I snuck past them and snagged the multi-dimensional bracelet for myself. Time to save Gwen! On days 44 through 46, I arrived back in Pop's dimension to find Gwen at the end of her rope. Gwen, are you okay? I'm sorry, I, I couldn't defeat him. It's up to you, Max. Please take this. Gwen handed me a pink and white sword just as Miguel came in close. There you are. Are you going to keep running from me? No way. You're going down now. I readied my new weapon and ran in towards Miguel. Little did I know that he had two blades of his own. The two of us slashed into each other with all of our might. It was spider versus spider in an epic battle unlike any other thus far. Miguel was quick on his feet, dealing crazy attacks with his dual blades. Each hit he managed to land on me expelled a massive amount of energy that sent me flying into the air. I used Hobie's guitar to blast Miguel off of me and gain some more space. Once he was far, I used my new razor webs to slash him down. He avoided the attacks the best he could, but I was chipping him down bit by bit. The two of us exchanged attacks, blocking and slashing into each other each chance we had. It was anyone's game. We charged in to land our finishing blows, but suddenly a black hole ripped open beneath both Miguel and I. We fell into the darkness below, unknowing of the horrors that would await us. On days 47 through 50, I woke up inside of a massive white void with Miguel. There stood a strange man covered in black dots. Ah, you're finally awake, my nemesis. You're what? I used to be a normal person, like you. But because of the reckless actions you took as heroes, I've been reduced to this terrible form. I'm going to eliminate every last Spider-Man from all dimensions. You fool. You're destroying the multiverse as we know it! This ends now! Miguel charged in full speed at the villain only for them to teleport before he could land a hit. He unleashed a crazy attack that left Miguel unable to move. My name's The Spot. Remember it. Miguel! I couldn't leave him for dead, but The Spot came for me next. I took out Gwen's blade and began to slash at the villain. I used all my strength and speed to try and catch him, but with his teleportation powers, he was too quick. I swing in nothing but air. I tried to pin him down with my webs, but he was too fast for those too. No matter what I did, I couldn't land a single hit. The spot hit me with an attack so powerful it left me at half a heart. Run, Max! I swallowed my pride and did as I was told. I had to live another day if I hoped to save the rest of the multiverse. 
I opened the portal and rushed back to the base. On days 51 through 54, I returned back to my base to find black holes had opened up all over the place. The spot is already attacking? I rushed inside to find that Gwen, Pop, and the other spider man were all taking cover from the attack. What's going on? I explained to them about my encounter with the spot, his unbeatable power, and how Miguel was in trouble. I've got an idea. Gwen ran outside of the base and set up some Spider Society equipment. She didn't have much time, but luckily she was able to stabilize the space and close up the holes. I won't hold forever. You better make a plan. Together, we discussed what we were going to do next and decided that the spot was a bigger threat than Miguel. We would have to save him and put an end to the evil deeds of this new villain. I think saving the guy that wants to kill you is a bit dumb. We're heroes and heroes help people. I'm sure he'll come around. I already told ya, I don't use labels, mate. Well, let's make an exception this time. In the meantime, I got to work on expanding the base for our new team member. I added a room for Pop that would remind him of home, including decor and colors that gave it that homey feel. Wow, this is great, Max. Thanks a bunch. I also added more red, blue, and cyan colors to my spider base to better represent my spider people. With that, my expansion was complete. Afterwards, I checked on Gwen, who was monitoring the Spider Society equipment. These holes are going to reopen if you can't find me a quantum gem block for the machinery. Do you think you can find one for me? You got it. It. On days 55 through 57, I began to search for the quantum gem that Gwen needed. Suddenly, my spider sense went off. I jumped back just as the black hole appeared in front of me. The spot! Like clockwork, a horde of the spot's goons appeared in the hole and charged towards me. They surrounded me with overwhelming numbers. I slowed them down by shooting my webs, making it easier for me to pick them off one by one. But they kept charging at me. They slashed with their shadowy claws, doing minimal damage. Unfortunately, my webs couldn't slow down the whole herd, so I flipped and dodged to keep my distance. I blasted them away with my guitar from Spider-Punk using its powerful bass to blast them away. With them crowding me, I pulled out Gwen's sword and was able to slash most of the goons. As the pack was getting smaller, I gained more space to dwindle their numbers. Eventually, I managed to take out the swarm and took this opportunity to find more intel. I jumped through the black hole and braced myself. When I arrived on the other side, I found Miguel trapped inside of a cage. Help! This cage is rigged with TNT. If you can't save me before the time runs out, it'll explode! Just then, a massive warden dragon came out to face me. I've never seen a mob like that before. The spot must be pulling mobs from other dimensions to attack me. Intruders will die. The warden dragon goon charged at me, ready to take me out. My opponent circled around me fast and struck me when I couldn't defend myself. I had to use my spider senses to counterattack his strikes. I used Gwen's sword to slash him down when he came close enough to attack. Its hulking fists rained down on me with immense force, slowly draining my health, but I was able to recover quickly to deal the same damage right back at it. Miguel watched from the sidelines, not able to help, so it was up to me to take down this monster using every spider power I knew. I fought with all my might, but the monster was proven to be too powerful. I was running out of time. Miguel would be killed if I didn't act fast. I have an idea. I used my web swinging to pass the beast and quickly free Miguel from his cage. Get back here. Miguel and I ran away as the monster tailed slowly behind. Unfortunately for him, the TNT went off, causing him to fall in the explosion behind us. Miguel, I don't have much time. Do you know where I can find a quantum gem? I saw some just south of here. I thanked Miguel and had him set off towards the base while I continued my quest for the quantum gem. I was running out of time, so I didn't have a moment to waste. On days 58 through 61, I followed the direction Miguel pointed me in to find a cave full of ore. In the wall, I spotted the quantum gem waiting for me. Time to get digging. I took out my pickaxe and started to dig. However, just as I finished mining it from the wall, the gem shocked me. Ow! What a weird rock! Little did I know, I had started something terrible. My bracelet started to beep wildly until it abruptly stopped, and tons of portals opened all around me. Oh no, I think my bracelet is broken! Not knowing where the portals lead, I opened another portal for myself to take me back home. I arrived back just in the nick of time and handed the quantum gem over to Gwen. <sighs> we got here just in time. Great job. Suddenly, my bracelet began to beat rapidly once again. It was on the fritz. Uh-oh. I couldn't control my bracelet anymore. I was teleported away to an unknown location. On days 62 through 64, I appeared inside some sort of western dimension. I tried to use my bracelet to head home, but it wasn't working anymore. I need to find a new bracelet, quick. I looked around and spotted a web slinger on his horse. I decided it was worth a shot asking him, hey fellow Spider-Man, <laughs> you wouldn't happen to have a multiversal bracelet I could use, would ya? You think you can just ask me for my bracelet after running away earlier? Yes? I'll only give you my bracelet if you can beat me in a standoff. You're on! The two of us stood in an open area with our weapons ready. I waited in bated breath as he began to count down. 
three, two, one. Draw! We drew our web shooters and I fired mine first, winning me the standoff. Unfortunately, the rogue web spooked his beloved horse companion. The horse trotted off towards who knows where. Hey, you scared my horse. Say bye to your prize. What? But I won. Uh-uh. Not without my horse, you didn't. Bring her back now. I was out of options, so I quickly ran and began to chase the horse as my only hope for the bracelet. I finally caught up with her as night fell, only to find that the horse was being attacked by a group of zombies. I couldn't let anything happen to the horse. I swung in and duked it out with the monsters. I had faced a lot of difficult foes up to this point, and I couldn't let a horde of zombies stop me. I used everything I had to take out each one one by one. It seemed like the horde was never ending. For each one I killed, two more would arrive. I punched and sliced through their rotten flesh and pushed through their onslaught of attacks. The battle was tough, but I managed to save the horse from the swarm. Just then, Webslinger caught up to me. I saw what you did for my girl. You're worthy of my bracelet. He handed over the bracelet like we agreed, and I prepared to portal back to the base. On days 65 through 68, I arrived at the base where Miguel was waiting for me. Still think I'm a bad guy? <sighs> Thank you and sorry for the trouble I've been causing. The spot is our main issue now, so let's work together. You got yourself a deal. With Miguel now my ally, I decided to expand the base a bit more. I started by making a lab for researching and creating more multiverse tech. We now had access to all the tools Miguel had to offer. After that, I added an underground room for Miguel that was full of all kinds of gadgets he could use to watch over the multiverse. Finally, I added a meeting room for all the spiders on my team to discuss plans on how we can defeat our new enemy, Spot. With that, my expansion was completed. It's meeting time! I gathered my whole team together and we sat around ready to listen to Miguel's briefing. First, I'd like to say sorry for almost killing all of you. I'm a good guy, I promise. Whatever, mate. It's in the past. Tell us how we're gonna beat this Dalmatian guy. The Spot's black holes are already appearing all over the multiverse. Our best course of action will be to stop these disturbances and gather more Spider-Men for the team. Everyone agreed with Miguel and he told me the coordinates of the first multiverse disturbance. Be careful, the spot is stronger than anything any of us have faced before. I didn't have a moment to waste. I hopped into the portal and went to my first destination unaware of the horrors that awaited me. On days 69 through 72, I arrived inside of a cartoony dimension. Everything looked like a 2D drawing, but something was horribly wrong. It was full of black holes. In the distance, I spotted a giant hamburger monster crawling out one of the openings. Oh no you don't. Out of nowhere, a spider pig jumped into the fray. That could be a new teammate. I better help. I followed after the pig and began to battle it out with a massive burger. Although it was just a sentient piece of meat, its giant size protected it from a variety of my attacks. I tried to blast the burger off of me using Hobie's guitar, but the monster continued to fight me like it was nothing. I would have to take it on up close whether I liked it or not. I took out Gwen's blade and began to slice down the burger to sides. Meanwhile, Spider-Ham tried to plant the monster in place with his webs. It was a difficult battle, but between the two of us, we gradually gained the upper hand. Without our forces combined, me and Spider-Ham managed to take down the oversized sandwich. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, which Spider-Man are you again? I'm Max. Yeah, I never heard of you. Suddenly, we heard a loud roar coming from behind us. We turned around and realized tons of burgers had emerged from the black holes. There were too many for us to take on alone. We have to run! On days 73 through 75, Spider-Ham and I flipped back to the base to take refuge. My home. It's being destroyed, and I can't do anything to stop it. I'm sorry. We'll definitely go back. I just need time to make a better plan. Just then, Miles walked up to us. I think I can help you out. Come with me, Max. I followed Miles until the two of us arrived at a training ground. The place looked intense, and dark clouds were beginning to gather in the sky. The weather doesn't look good. Are you sure it's okay to be out here? Definitely. Now, let's get started. Put this on. Miles tossed over some <laughs> iron armor. What? That'll attract the lightning to me! Exactly. Trust me. I thought Miles might have gone crazy, but I did what he said anyways. Once I was fully equipped with armor, thunder began to strike in the distance. I have a bad feeling about this. Just like I had predicted, lightning came down from the sky and zapped me hard. I was left with low health, but I had gained 5 more hearts and a new electric ability. Whoa! 
That actually worked! Thanks, Miles! No problem. Oh, and for the finishing touches... I removed my iron armor as Miles took out a can of spray paint. He began to spray my suit with a brand new palette to give myself my very own Spider-Man identity. My suit was now a signature orange and purple. Time to save Spider-Ham's home. On days 76 through 79, I returned with Spider-Ham to his dimension to find it festering with burger monsters. Unfortunately for them, with my new lighting powers, I was ready now for anything. It's lunchtime! We engage in combat with the army of burgers. They were just as insanely powerful as the first monster, but now I was up against an army. Luckily, my training had made me much stronger. Thanks to my new hearts, I was able to take more attacks while dishing out damage on my own. The horde of monsters all tried to devour me, but I used my new electric venom to zap them off of me. I honed in my strength and electrocuted the army in mass. The burgers fried and fell one by one. Thanks to my training with Miles, I was able to take down every last one of the intruders. With the burgers now defeated, the black holes closed up. Thank you so much for saving my home. Take this as a gift. Spider-Ham tossed over a cartoonish hammer. Consider me an ally. Thanks, Ham. Before we could celebrate, the horrible spot appeared out of nowhere. You think that charade is enough to defeat me? Come on. Take this! Spot teleported into the fray, but Spider-Ham started to fight him off. When he had a chance, he ripped open a new portal for me. I'll hold him off. Go through this portal and meet my friend. He should be able to help you. I did as I was told and fell through the portal into an unknown dimension. On days 80 through 83, I arrived inside of a black and white dimension. In front of me was loads of police tape. I was at the scene of a murder. What happened here? Just who are you, fella? Out of the shadows, a Spider-Man in a black suit emerged before me. He quickly shot me down with his web making me unable to move. Uh-oh. Before I knew it, he had me sitting with him inside of an interrogation room. I'm Spider Noir, private detective. I'll ask again, who are you? Uh, I'm Max? Wrong answer. Tell me why you were at the scene of the crime. <laughs> it's a long story. Actually, save your breath. I know why you were there. You're the killer. What? No! I'm a Spider-Man like you! I'd never kill anyone innocent! I don't believe you. You bought a cheap costume so you could trick me. I'm ending this now. Things were going south quickly, but I suddenly remembered I had something to prove my innocence. I put the hammer Spider-Ham gave me on the table. Your friend Spider-Ham gave me this. You have to believe me. That is definitely his hammer. You could tell by the cartoony shape of it. You're right. I'm sorry. But if it wasn't you, then who was responsible for the murder? Suddenly, we spotted someone run by the window. After them! Now! On days 84 through 86, Noir and I pursued the mysterious suspect. They were quick on their feet, and something told me they weren't your typical civilian. Regardless, we were ready to take on whoever it was. Noir and I cornered the villain, only to discover it was none other than Venom. What's this to Spider-Man? That's right. Now tell us, were you responsible for the murder scene? That was just the leftovers of our dinner. But now it's time for dessert. Venom charged at us, ready to make us his latest meal. He smashed his massive fist into the ground and caused the concrete to fly around us. I knew that even though both Noir and myself were fighting him, he still had enough strength to take us both down if we weren't careful. He hit us one after the other with his powerful attacks and there wasn't enough space to evade in the alleyway. I lured the symbiote out towards the main street to give us more footing and continued fighting in the open. I shot him down with my webs to try and keep him from running and used all of my powers to deal loads of damage. He would break free from our web traps, but Noir and I kept doing everything we could to hold him down. The battle was tough, but we were slowly getting an edge. Between the power of Noir and I, we managed to take out the oversized symbiote. Upon his death, he dropped the mysterious letter. I've almost retrieved the void gem that the spot asked me to find. Once I get it, his plans will be completed and all Spider-Men will be eliminated from the multiverse. This is horrible! We have to find that void gem before the spot can! This sounds serious. Let me help you in your fight to take this guy down. We'd be happy to have you. Noir officially joined my team, and the two of us hurried back to the base to fill in the other Spideys. On days 87 through 89, I returned to the base and called a meeting with all of our team members. To my surprise, Spider-Ham was there too. You made it back safe! Don't underestimate me. That Spot guy got away though. We have to do something. Yeah, about that. I quickly filled in the team on the letter that Noir and I discovered and the spot's plans to eliminate all Spider-Men with the use of a Void Gem. Did you say Void Gem? The artifact is incredibly powerful. We have to find it first. Any ideas? With all of the gear at this base, I'm sure I can find it, but I'll need some time. You got it! 
Since I had to wait, I started to work on an expansion for the spider base. I made a room for Spider-Ham, being sure to add plenty of cartoony elements to make the little guy feel at home. Finally, I made a room for Spider-Noir completely out of black and white blocks. It was like he was in his own dimension. Once I finished the room, my expansion was complete. Time to check on Miguel. I returned to Miguel's room and asked him for a status update. I'm still working on finding it, but I did notice another disturbance. Could you handle that in the meantime? You got it! On days 90 through 92, I arrived in the dimension that Miguel asked me to investigate to find a city in ruin. After some investigating, I discovered that it was being destroyed by none other than Carnage Max. Wait, aren't you me? It's kind of a long story. Could you stop doing that, bud? Yeah, sure. As long as whoever is watching subscribes to the channel. Thanks, man. My Carnage counterpart stopped its attack, so I portaled back to the base to see if the preparations were finally complete. On days 93 through 95, I returned to the base and reported back to the team. How was the mission? Uh, it was kind of weird, but I figured it out. Suddenly, I heard a loud strum of a guitar that caused the whole base to tremble. What was that? I rushed to the source of the music to find Hobie shredding away on his guitar. It was amplified stronger than anything I had heard before. Once he spotted me in his room, he stopped playing so we could chat. That was incredible! How'd you do that? Oh, it was a little chick I picked up. Let me show ya. I practiced my guitar skills with Hobie, and after a while, my guitar skills grew even stronger than before. Whoa! This will definitely help us take out the spot. Thanks! Just then, Miguel entered the room. I finally have the coordinates of the Void Gem, but be careful. It's in a dimension unlike anything I've ever heard of before. I'm up for the challenge! I gathered all of my strength and set off towards the unknown dimension. I had a sinking feeling that my hardest challenge was just ahead. On days 96 through 98, I arrived at the dimension to find that it was a massive dark void. Nothing was around me. It was completely lifeless. What kind of place is this? You shouldn't be here. I turned towards the source of the sound to find another prowler had emerged from the darkness. Another prowler? What's going on? Let's make this quick. Suddenly, the Prowler pounced onto me with tremendous force. He used his sharp claws to slice my health down little by little. I retaliated with every weapon I held in my arsenal. Utilizing my guitar, I sent shockwaves in the Prowler's direction, but he wasn't stopping. He continued forward, stepping past some of my attacks. I bombarded him with my electric venom, shocking every bone in his body. Nothing I was using was working. He saw past every move I made like he knew what I was going to do next. I had no choice but to pull out all the stops, even trying hand-to-hand -hand combat. But with his deadly claws at the ready, that wasn't looking like a great idea. He even managed to deal the brunt force of Spider-Man's hammer. He was too strong! I fought with all of my might, but the Prowler managed to knock me down to very low health. This is the end for you. On day 99, I was at death's door when another portal ripped open before me. To my surprise, Miles jumped through. I'm here, Max. Wait, Uncle Aaron? No. <laughs> I'm your worst nightmare. The Prowler changed his suit, revealing that he wasn't who we thought he was. He was Miles from another dimension. Let's see who the stronger Miles Morales is. He turned his sights on my ally and the two began to fight. It was good Miles versus his evil counterpart. The Prowler was armed with his clawed gloves, but Miles only had fists. The fight looked like it was going to be one-sided, but I could tell that Miles had the resolve to push through. He punched through the Prowler as fast as lightning and electrified him with his electric venom. The Prowler was fast and managed to dodge some of his attacks, but he couldn't escape all of them. Unfortunately, he was able to dig his claws into Miles 2 for massive damage. The two went back and forth, neither side giving in. It looked like either of them could fall at any moment. Even so, Miles kept fighting with all of his might. The battle was fierce, but in the end, my Miles managed to pull through. He overpowered the Prowler and took him down once and for all. Miles, are you okay? Yeah, but I can't move on with you. Take this, get the Void Gem. You're our last hope. Miles handed me the potion of healing, which would turn me back to full health. Thanks to him, I was able to keep moving deeper into the void. I had to end this before it was too late. On day 100, I walked deeper into the void until I finally spotted the void gem on a pedestal. There it is! Suddenly, the spot appeared out of nowhere in front of the pedestal. Shame that my minions couldn't stop you. Would have been easier for you to die that way. But I guess it was always meant to be this way. Looks like I'll have to take this on myself. Out of my way! 
You're not getting that! It was now or never. I had to take down the spot before he could complete his master plan. Just like our previous encounter, he was able to teleport around rapidly, making it hard to get a hit on him. All the while, he was getting close and punch me for heavy damage. I tried to use my webs to pin him into place, but he managed to teleport out of my traps before I could land any real damage. He was faster and more fierce than anyone else I had faced this far, but I didn't get all the way here just to fail. I used my spidey sense to predict the spot's movements and finally managed to land attacks back. I had a wide arsenal of weapons to use on him now. I cycled between Hobie's guitar, Gwen's blade, Miles' electric venom, and Ham's hammer to deal damage into my foe. We went back and forth, trading hit after hit. I was getting closer and closer to defeat, but I could tell the spot was getting weaker too. I held on for the fate of the multiverse and all of my spider friends I'd made along the way. I must up all of my strength and landed one final blow. The spot fell to my power and I took him down once and for all. I did it!